Baumgartner, who played Kevin Malone on The Office. He spoke to us about why fans love The Office so much. And later, Fran Drescher told us why every human should own a pet. And our buddy Leah Remini revealed what she likes to watch. It might surprise some people. All right, that was a good teaser for you. Let's get to today's first item. It's Nancy Cartwright. She might be the most recognizable voice from The Simpsons because she plays Bart Simpson. She's the voice. She's been behind the naughty and rebellious Bart for 30 years in The Simpsons, and she told us what it's been like to be part of such an iconic show. You know, when I was cast as Bart, it was like, it was such a dream come true for me because I think everybody has a little bit of Bart Simpson in him or her, you know, in them. <laughs> It's true. We all have these personalities. We're we're a, we're such a, a such a conglomeration of so many personalities. I describe Bart Simpson as being a ten year old school hating underachiever and proud of it. That was the description that I read in the original audition when I went, and I was supposed to go in for Lisa, but I decided I wanted to do Bart and he just seemed more interesting than an eight year old middle child. His description was so much more clear. So I went in and Matt Groening was there and I had an idea in mind and I said, blah, 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 blah. He's like, oh my God, that's him, that's Bart. And I was hired, boom, on the spot. <laughs> Eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? I think Bart Simpson has probably got the most catchphrases of anyone. It's, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? Eat my shorts, get bent, no way man, cowabunga, whoa mama. I mean, all these things are like, whoa, <laughs> score. It's such a hard question to answer about like, what's my favorite, I don't really, it's kind of like asking who's your favorite kid. There's a good handful of episodes that definitely rank up there. Some of my favorites are the musicals. I love the musicals, like Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, you know, that's a really good one. Cause that's that takeoff on Mary Poppins and Sherry Bobbins is so funny and the singing of it is just crazy. You know, if you want to be our sitter, please be sweet and never bitter. If you wish to be our sitter, please be sweet and never bitter. Help us with math and book reports. Might I add, eat my shorts. Bart! Oh, when Bart gets an F. That's the title of it. It's the first show of the second season. And kind of humbly speaking, I guess, modestly speaking, that one, re it got a lot of attention. And it takes Bart it turns him into, from the first 13 that we did the first season, that episode really shows you a level of Bart Simpson that you had never seen before. And he goes into, he just gets really, really sad. And he's super sincere about how he tried to study. And he starts to cry because he feels like he's going to flunk the fourth grade. And um, that, that stands out in my mind. <laughs> The matter? Well, I would think you'd be used to failing by now. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I really tried this time. I mean, I really tried. Early on in the show, um, it was made very clear to us that, that the actors are not the stars of the show, that the characters are the stars of the show, and I, nobody had any problem with that. I don't think anybody had any idea that the show was going to go on, you know, 33 plus years and, and turn into the icon that it is. But we instead were all like armpit to armpit, elbow to elbow in one little tiny booth that was not meant for recording in. So we had like moving carpets up on the walls because they were one big wall was all glass. And when we spoke, it would vibrate. So they had to put a carpet in front of it and we would all share the same microphone armpit check you know uh, um, and here I am very pregnant it was a lot of um, give and take from from all of us actors but it was I, I look at that and like that is such a such a humble modest beginning for what came to be you know it's pretty cool when I meet fans it's like it's, it's pretty cool because most of the time I'm not recognized. 
Most of the time, I'm just this anonymous celebrity, and it doesn't matter where I am. Nobody, because I don't look like him. My skin's not yellow, nine spikes. I'm not a 10-year-old boy. But I can have more causation over revealing who I really am. And so if it's just a spontaneous thing and I'm talking to somebody and I ask them, so what's your name? And they say, oh, my name's Katie. And I'll say, well, hi, Katie, I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? And it is just like the jaw drops to the ground. And it's equally fun for me. It still is to this day. I love surprising people. And it's kind of a cool thing. It sometimes pops people out of their funk. And isn't that kind of what we need right now? We need some kind of enlightenment. We need some humor, some lightness, some aesthetics. One question that people like to ask me is, why is The Simpsons so successful? How has it lasted this, this long? And I think it just, it, it actually doesn't even matter what, this is funny to say this, what decade you look at, because we're, <laughs> we're in our third decade. That's crazy. But no matter what decade you look at, The Simpsons, has a consistency in the the business model, in you know the way that it's done. It's got this family that has its own kind of rules or or lack of uh, lack of rules, and they're kind of a nice quote unquote normal family. And I do think they represent a lot of people that can say, "Wow, that's us." You know, whether it's the Simpsons or all the citizens of Springfield, it's like people can find things that they can relate to. And that has been such a success and the tip of the hat to the writers and the executives on the show. Thanks to Nancy for sharing all those memories with us. Next up, we're revisiting the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company with the Office star, Brian Baumgartner. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody good, and that's it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on Today. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. We have Scranton, Pennsylvania on the mind for this next flashback interview. Hard to believe it's been 17 years since the premiere of The Office, the hit TV show about the work lives of paper company employees. Brian Baumgartner played the lovable Kevin Malone and weighed in on why he thinks people still love the show so much. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. I want to eat a pig in a blanket. In a blanket. In a blanket. Nope, it's not Ashton Kutcher. It's Kevin Malone. Equally handsome, equally smart. Well, Kevin Malone, <laughs> how would I describe Kevin Malone? Uh, I think Kevin Malone is uh, a man of uh, some unique skills um, who uh, is, is misunderstood in a way. His childlike sensibility fits into the rest of the ensemble of The Office um, very well. I had such a blast playing him and, and continue to be delighted by, by how fans re react to him. 
I do think that of all of the other actors and 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 characters uh, on the office, I do think that that probably I'm the most dissimilar uh, to mine. My Kleenex shoes were a huge conversation piece, but man, my dogs are barking. But you know, look, I loved, I I loved his ability. Um, to be in the moment. I used to say he has no memory of what happened before or any ramifications for what might happen uh, in the future. But in the moment, he uh, if he enjoyed a moment, he was willing to show it. Um, often didn't think too far ahead, but I had uh, I had a blast playing with him. And, and you know, our little uh, our little group in the corner, the accountants, Oscar and Angela and Kevin, I, I describe it. As, as kind of a perfect comedy triangle. Well, I need to give my cat up for adoption. Mm. The one who uses the doorbell, or the one with the Mexican hat, or the one with the rain galoshes, or the one that you let go around naked. Which had nothing to do with us, which had to do with the, the writers and the construction of the characters, but um, the way that the alliances kept shifting, their specific personalities and how they played off of each other uh, was so much fun to do for, for almost a decade. I think for me now, my favorite episode would have to be Stress Relief, um, otherwise known as uh, the Dwight's fake fire drill. Oh, here's a door. Check that one out. How's the handle? It, it's warm. Okay, go to the back well, door. Uh, another option. Another option. Jeez. Okay, settle down, everyone. And I think, you know, for me now, um, there's so many great episodes, but I, I think for me, what was happening outside of the show uh, carries special significance for me as well. So I think it's a hilariously funny, well-written episode. I saw a friend today, it had been a while. We forgot each other's name. A lot of things spring to mind thinking about the finale. I basically shot the show my 30s. My whole 30s was dedicated to being together, which is, is high school and college and then two more years, uh, spending a lot of time with those people. So, you know, it was really knowing that whatever happened, the, the friendships would be there, um, the relationships would, would remain, but we wouldn't be spending 60 to 70 hours a week together anymore. And that, that was going to be a, a huge change uh, for us. So uh, a huge feeling of loss. Uh, but also tremendously proud of the journey that we had and the fact that we chose to end it. We had a story that we wanted to tell and we made sure that, that we got that story in uh, and told it, you know, largely with, with the original people who were, were cast. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone who was on the show could have ever guessed that the show would end up doing, um, becoming what it has become today. I mean, we were, we were almost, we almost, made a pilot and was never on the air and then you know the fact that that an audience picked up on it i always knew what we were doing was special if people gave it a chance i just thought well people aren't going to give it a chance so um i'm i'm tremendously uh proud of the show as i say to people i'm i'm a fan of the show and 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 love watching it and, and i'm so proud to have been a part of it you know in in examining through this book that I have coming out, Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, you know, one of the things that we are looking at is why the show has not just survived, but has thrived eight years after we have filmed any anything. And I think that it's really about the people. Uh, it's really about the construction of, of, of the idea and the aesthetic of the show that was so really revolutionary and groundbreaking at the time, but the hiring of the specific actors to play the roles and the writing staff that was brought in, which are now the top comedy writers in television today. You know, it was just a, a special and unique collection of people uh, led by Greg Daniels, who, you know, created the show um, and uh, and his genius in, in, in finding the perfect people for their job. That's really why I think. What a classic. We love that show in our house. Hope you enjoyed that one. Office fans, it was for you. Coming up, we've got nanny star Fran Drescher sharing the key to easing her anxiety. It happens to be her furry friend. 
Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Welcome back to today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Did you know that Fran Drescher is a huge, huge dog lover? She's even had a famous dog of her own. Get this, Chester, that's the dog on the nanny, was actually Fran's real life dog. She told us all about that and how her pets have shaped her life in this episode of our series, My Pet Tale. I start on the nanny and I wrote a part for my first dog ever, Chester Drescher. Oh, Chester, I haven't seen you in such a long time. Nanny, fine, please. He doesn't like strangers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chester was an amazing dog because he was extremely consistent in his behavior. We knew what he would do under certain circumstances, so we wrote towards that. And that was why every time, you know, Cece Babcock grabbed him away from me, we knew that he would growl. Oh, how thoughtful! <laughs> So we always had her do that. You need some time to get used to you. I mean, you can't expect a dog to just jump into your arms and love you at first sight. Mr. Sheffield. Oh, you got her a puppy. Oh, how sweet. Oh, look how friendly he is. And it was great working with him because he was always on the set anyway. I'm always of the camp, must love dogs. I have a, a dog now. Uh, Angel Grace, and I rescued her just days before lockdown, and then she rescued me. And for the first couple of months of our relationship at my house, you know, it was just her and me. I don't think she really uh, knew what was happening, but all of a sudden, you know, it was just the two of us for a couple of months, and so it really did bond us. And we're very, very close now, and she's three years old, and I travel with her, and she's my service animal. So I'm just very grateful to have the first big dog I've ever had. And, you know, she uh, gives me added security and, uh, and helps me through situations that sometimes would otherwise uh, make me anxious. She's kind of different shades of white and bone. And I thought she was so loving when I met her at the rescue place and so sweet uh, that uh, I said, you know, are you an angel? Did Samson send you to me? And Samson was the dog that sadly uh, had died just days earlier uh, from a stroke. I said, are you an angel? Is that your name? 
And it just seemed suitable to her because she is such an angel. She is definitely a big part of the family. She's got all these other mothers who come and take care of her if I have to go out of town and I can't take her with me. Dog is God spelled backwards, and I think that dogs are here to teach us unconditional love, to remind us that there's room in our hearts to love another, even if you've loved and lost. And I think that every human should experience unconditional love. It's just a, a bond between two species that really is unparalleled. I just, you know, couldn't live without having a canine to love and care for and feel loved by and share my bed with. Just be there as a friend and a companion and company, a wonderful company. In fact, as a cancer survivor, you know, I always tell other people recently diagnosed, make sure your pet sleeps in the bed with you because at night is when your imagination and fear starts to run wild because you don't have the distractions of the day. And if you don't have a pet, get one. Well, it's really nice to hear people's pet stories. They mean so much. All right, still to come, Leah Remini breaks down her must-watch list. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? And welcome back. We absolutely love learning more about our friend Leah Remini. When she can't fall asleep, she turns to one particular show, and it just might surprise you. She spoke to us for our What I Watch series. When I have to fall asleep, when I can't fall asleep, I put on forensic files. Don't know why, listening to stories, people being murdered, gets me to sleep. That's probably, I mean, a psychologist would probably have an answer. It was a delivery he never expected. The older version of Forensic Files, the guy's voice, it's so soothing. And he's like, and then they found her decapitated. Something about the guy's voice. I don't know what it is. What I watch when I need comfort food is a reality show. Pick any one, Housewives of any state. Or I watch A Love Island, or I watch Below Deck. Basically, bravo. What I love about reality shows in general is that I just feel like it takes me away, like it's a mind vacation. I, I, I find myself not multitasking in my brain, like when I'm watching something, um, that's you know newsworthy i start to think about all the things i need to do in my life things i'm not doing right um i think i should be a better daughter a better mother a better this a better aunt a better sister you know but when i watch reality shows it's almost like my mind is suspended it is literally frozen 
And I mean, I the picture of, I get of myself while I'm watching reality shows is just kind of drool. Kind of, it isn't, but I do, like that's what I picture myself doing because it's so mind numbing. My daughter Sophia got me onto Love Island, but only UK versions. Like she, you know, we find that to be li- the better versions of of, of Love Island. <laughs> it's a little riskier. Um, so I, I really tend to, to go to those or like I'll watch a marathon of like say yes to the dress. It's the not having to think about changing the channel or, you know, so it's usually if I see there's five, six, seven, eight seasons of something, I'm in because then somehow I like fall asleep and then I'm like, wait, well, how'd I get on season four? And it's just anything that has multiple seasons. What I watch that might surprise people, I don't know that what I watch might surprise people. I do watch a lot of documentaries. I don't know that that's surprising to people, but when people talk about documentaries, they're like, you probably haven't seen this. I'm like, seen it. Like, I'll watch a documentary on uh, flies. Like, I just love documentaries. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just love uh, real stories. Sitting here- I didn't need to prepare for the King of Queens because I am Carrie. Um, There's no need for me to prep. Oh, she's a girl from Brooklyn married to a neighborhood guy who has a crazy father in her basement. Like there was nothing I needed to prep for. I knew the character. I know the character very well. But you know what's funny about the King of Queens is that I remember um, our producers when I first got the role, we did a pilot and our executive producer was like you know why do you, why are you wearing makeup and i was like first of all have you been to a borough in new york like you know what i mean like queens brooklyn what do like the idea of what a borough per, like was like they don't get their nails done they don't wear makeup and i was like first of all everything from a borough like i'm from bensonhurst don't tell me, like, I didn't have a lot of money growing up, but my stuff was coordinated. You know, like my outfits were matching the shirt, you know, back in my day, it was matching your shirt with your socks and like everything was color coordinated. So like the idea of what somebody from New York is like was so off. And I was like, nah, I, this girl gets her nails done. This girl gets her hair done. This girl, like, cause this girl is me. So we're not doing sweatpants and and I go and by the way if we wear sweatpants it's color coordinated what what I watched when I did a good cry (laughs) terms of endearment um the notebook steel magnolias it's about friendships it's about family it's about um, losing people that you love. I mean, it's just, and the notebook just like, just kills me. I just, every time. There's not a time. And then um, Moulin Rouge. I know that sounds crazy, but I cry every time. Every time she dies. Every time. I've seen it 56 times, probably just in the last year. It's a wonderful life. Every holiday, crying. Every time, every time. What I watch with my family is anything my daughter wants to watch. It's not um, done by votes or even what her parents would want to watch because as they get older, they have their own rooms, they have their own computers, they can watch whatever they want to watch. So if my daughter says, I want to watch such and such, with you guys, I'm like, K okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Whatever she wants to watch, I'm like, I will watch. Thanks to Leah for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Well, there you have it. That was today's Popstar Plus. Thanks for being here and join us again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye.
Hello and welcome to our Today All Day special, Cracking the Case, America's Obsession with True Crime. I'm Gotti Schwartz and we're at Othram Labs in Houston for an incredible story we're gonna get to later in our show. But first, we set the scene. Why is it that our society is so obsessed with true crime? Let's take a deeper look. We have a kidnapping. All right, please. Explain to me what's going on, okay? There, we have a, there's a note left and our daughter's gone. From John Benet Ramsey and O.J. Simpson, started yelling, he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me. I said, well, who, who is going to kill you? She said, OJ. To Natalie Holloway and Gabby Petito. Justice for Gabby is that we see justice for her homicide. True crime has captivated audiences for years with no end in sight. An explosion of true crime content on television with shows like Dateline and Tiger King leaving viewers transfixed and searching for more. In fact, audience demand for true crime has grown more than 73% in the documentary streaming space. But the largest platform? Podcasts, where 62 million Americans a year listen to deep dives of intricate cases. I think there's something about these cases that feels unfinished. We want to try and understand why it happened. For Ashley Flowers, an interest turned into a true crime empire started by her podcast, Crime Junkie. I was always what I now call a crime junkie. Making it a career was a totally different journey and I wanted to find a way to actually start making a difference and not just listen or read these stories. True crime's impact close to home for Kim Goldman, who experienced the death of her brother, Ron Goldman, in the public eye. My brother's case is still relevant today because it was the first opportunity that we had to peek inside a courtroom to understand how money and celebrity and race plays a part. And with the internet being what it is and social media being what it is, it allows the new generation, the younger generation to peek in again and it just drums up a tremendous amount of energy. Goldman recently launched a new podcast, Media Circus, to hear the stories of victims. Having been the subject of a high profile case for so long, I was first in line to see how mistruths and rumors and conspiracies and negativity can be incredibly damaging to the, the healing process and to grief. Others are turning to social media like TikTok to amplify cases. I got into true crime TikTok because I wanted to see people of my skin tone being represented. I wanted to be one of the first. Kimberly Chapman, also known as True Crime Kimberly, has amassed over 800,000 followers for her takes on captivating cases. It's just mind blowing how people can, can commit such crazy acts and get away with it. I just want to know what's going through those people's head when they're doing those things. What started as one hot take became a TikTok phenomenon. From that video, it really just took off and the comments was filled with people saying, talk about this person and talk about that. And I have a missing person that I want you to talk about. But what's behind this American obsession with true crime? We ask psychologist Shavana Childs. We deep dive into it so that we can get the whole picture. We want to know how this person ticks. We want to know what was behind the story. It's a look into their deeper lives. Women are particularly interested in true crime because it becomes a template of what not to do, of how to save themselves should they find themselves in similar situations. We want to know that we can survive. And is there such a thing as too much true crime? Dr. Childs warns psychological impacts can occur. If you find that you're losing sleep, if you find that you're isolating from your friends, if you find that you're nervous in situations that you typically wouldn't be because you've been watching true crime, it might be time to pull back. But the public's interest in true crime doesn't look like it's slowing down, impacting lives across the world. I think the future of true crime media is figuring out how we can do it in the most ethical way possible. And I think that is ensuring that we're working in tandem with, with victims, with law enforcement, making sure, most importantly, that we're not re-traumatizing victims and their families by telling these stories. If people like myself are gonna operate in the true crime space, then we need to find a way to give back. And I think that is gonna be a lot more mainstream coming in the future. You might know actress Marisol Nichols from the show Riverdale, but far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Nichols has assumed a role of a lifetime, a real-life undercover operative working to end human trafficking. In her acting career spanning nearly three decades, Marisol Nichols has played detectives, Freeze! Hands in the air! principals, okay, I won't suspend her if you do me one favor, and CEOs. I have a ton of work to do. Come with me. 
comedy where? She's best known for her work on hit show Riverdale. Your disrespect will no longer be tolerated. Not by me and certainly not by your father when he comes home. But it's her role out of the spotlight she's most proud of. It's described as an undercover operative. What does that mean? I'm literally undercover pretending to be someone else into a situation where we're infiltrating different scenarios. As a licensed informant, Nichols helps crack down on human trafficking, a $150 billion industry that involves labor and sexual exploitation. One in four victims of modern slavery are children, according to the International Labor Organization. Leaning on her acting prowess, Nichols has posed as just about everything to lure perpetrators in, even a young child as seen here. What was going through your mind in that first operation? I'll never forget this one guy. He's like, hey, kiddo. And I wanted to just like, you want to reach through the phone and just annihilate this person. And you can't because I need to, I need to make this guy and these men come out of hiding who have done this so many times and are used to doing this, by the way. And I need them to show up because I've got a room full of law enforcement with semi-automatic weapons in the room next to me. And they're waiting to take these guys down and get them off the street. The 48-year-old partners with police, district attorneys, governments, and nonprofits like Operation Underground Railroad, founded by former special agent Tim Ballard. And when I met him, I was like, I've been looking for you. Because I'm, I go, it's great to wait, raise awareness, and that's wonderful, but I want to know who's getting the kids. Like, who is going out there and, like, rescuing these people? Is, is anyone doing this? And I was like, that's the guy. That introduction proved to be pivotal, pushing Nichols to the front lines of rescue operations that have led to the arrest of dozens of people. Being so close to this, this is dark stuff. Very. How do you cope? It's, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's, <laughs> I don't come home normal. Some of the things that I've done have brought me to very dark, dark, dark places on the planet. But then I go, if my kid was taken and that was my kid, I would hope to God that someone else would risk their life for her. The risks are not lost on Nichols. She's a 13 year old daughter at home and thinks of her often ahead of operations, which can get messy. Was there ever a moment where you're like, oh, should I be doing this? Is this too risky? A hundred percent. The last one I did, I wrote a letter to my kid because it was pretty dangerous. And I'm like, if I don't come back from this, I don't want her to be mad that I died saving someone else's kid, essentially. So I wrote a letter to her to explain to her like why I was doing this. Nichols says as a survivor of sexual assault in her adolescence, the mission is personal for her. And I got raped a bunch by a bunch of guys. And it, it was pretty traumatizing. I woke up in the police department. I didn't know what happened. To this day, I don't remember much. Years later, Nichols leaned on the Church of Scientology to pull her away from drugs and improve her mental health. We pressed her on recent accusations in a lawsuit of trafficking within the church. Accusations the church denied in a statement to NBC News, saying in part, the allegations are both scurrilous and ridiculous, and the lawsuit is both a sham and scam. Has that ever given you pause? Uh, no, not in the least. It's so absurd, and for me, I know what I've seen, I know what I've experienced in Scientology, it saved my life. She's set to take a deep dive of the ups and downs in her life and volunteer work in a new podcast released this month. What's your hope, what's your goal for your efforts? My goal is to have enough good people know about this so that they demand an end to it. Still to come, celebrity medium Tyler Henry and mom Teresa share their personal true crime story in their first sit-down interview. And later, how this forensic lab is working to make cold cases obsolete. Stay with us. Texas from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. It's a can't miss summer on today. Bam! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Welcome back. If you've read the news, odds are you've seen coverage of true crime cases, but most of that coverage seems to spotlight missing and murdered white women. Jennifer Buckley is working to change that. Take a look. Jennifer Buckley carefully applies red paint to her hand. The paint is symbolic. It speaks of violence, of silence, and resilience. It's art intended to have an impact, to awaken a state and a continent to the tragedy of missing and murdered indigenous women. I think collectively it just doesn't seem like our indigenous lives are as important as some others. It doesn't matter if it's on the reservation, off the reservation. Um, when people go missing, they're not looked for the same way. Missoula, Montana County Attorney Kirsten Pabst. It's an epidemic. It is a huge problem in Montana. Our Missing persons, when you look at the numbers, 25 to 30 percent of our missing persons are native. They only make up about six to seven percent of our population. There are issues of jurisdiction. Whose problem? Tribal or municipal and state, local or even federal law enforcement. What do you think the roots of it are? I think you have to go back hundreds of years to colonization and um, cultural degradation, cultural degradation of our Native American cultures. And you combine that with this um, surge of methamphetamine and domestic violence that we're seeing today. We're to the point now where we have to do something different. For an epidemic mostly unnoticed and rarely publicized, that something different fell to Jen Buckley who is an enrolled member of the Chippewa Cree tribes out of Rocky Boy, Montana. I just came up with a, well, maybe I'll just see if anybody wants to get their picture taken with the red handprint on their face to raise awareness. So that's how it started. One of the first places the photos landed was in the office of the county prosecutor. It's so powerful because, not only because of the intense and beautiful images, but you almost also captured the isolation visually as well that so many of um, the murdered and missing women face. When you decided to put these up in your office, I mean, it just speaks volumes to you guys. You know what I mean? When you're putting these up is such a platform, and it just was really humbling. Jen, though, began to dream bigger much bigger. I just started to think, like, what is a large scale thing that people see that they have to see? And it, it, I just like, oh, I don't know, there's billboards. Lamar Billboards donates the space, but Jen and her project are on a shoestring budget. I can raise the $200, it's up for a month, and then it comes down because I, I gotta wait till I have the, the next $200 to put it back up. Funded by the sales of her photos, the occasional donation, Jen has bigger dreams. My hope is definitely that I can get them up permanently, not only in Montana, but through the United States and into Canada. It's needed because too often the attention goes elsewhere. Just look at that white female that went missing from New York that was found dead in Wyoming and how much national exposure she got. Was it Gabby? And how many Native American females went missing in that same time period and there was nothing, so. Not a blip. Veteran Missoula police detective Guy Baker those billboards are a great way to bring awareness to this very important issue and uh, you know how many thousands of people driving by them every day see it so Jen has done a, a good job of kind of making it a personal issue that yeah. people can relate to important to detective Baker because maybe a billboard will help him solve a case he's worked on for years the missing Jermaine Charlo Jermaine is the niece sister of Alinda Morjo who volunteered to be photographed by Jennifer Buckley. 
The work Jennifer is doing is important. I'm hoping that her work reaches outside of Montana, that we can get billboards in New York, all the way down to Texas and up into Canada. This, this is crisis and it needs to stop. How is it for you to know your sister has been gone these years now? It's, it's been extremely hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever been through. Maybe this could make a difference. It will. It will. I know it will. Coming up, celebrity medium Tyler Henry and his mom, Teresa, reveal their very own, very personal true crime mystery. She shares her story of kidnap, being raised by serial killers, and much more after the break. Need your true crime fix on the go? Dateline episodes are available as podcasts. Mysteries with a twist from the true crime original. Wow. Listen to Dateline wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Are you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. It feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Reality television star Tyler Henry is known for his spot-on psychic readings, helping celebrities, and even working with law enforcement to solve cold cases. But now he's speaking out about a cold case that is very close to his heart. Take a look. How many R names can you think of in the family? Two. Okay. Because they are referencing the two R's. It keeps coming up. As Tyler Henry was finding fame as the star of E's Hollywood Medium, helping celebrities communicate with their loved ones from beyond the grave, even helping detectives and investigators solve cold cases. His own mother, Teresa Colwyn, was coping with a dark secret of her own. Three years ago, my mom discovered that she was taken as a baby. Before then, Teresa believed her mother was Stella Guidry Nessel, a career criminal who murdered and tortured two people in the Central Valley Motel. I still just can't come to terms with that part. I mean, it's one thing to murder someone, but to torture them. I think one of the important things we learned in this is really just the intergenerational effect of trauma. Stella's crimes devastating the lives of not only her victim's family, but Teresa's own family too. This traumatic history revisited in Tyler's Netflix series, Life After Death. So your middle name was Weva, but this has you down as Java. So I know my birth certificate yeah. has been doctored. Teresa learning Stella was not her birth mother, her birth mother, now deceased, had been tricked by Stella. The exact circumstances still unknown. And she raised me and used me in a way that she needed to benefit herself. The series capturing Teresa's emotional reunion with her biological family. 
My feelings um, when I met with my biological family were actually bittersweet as well, because while I loved them and adored them immediately, they're just wonderful, wonderful people. I also felt a loss because I felt like, well, what if I had been able to be raised with them? Ironically, Tyler says his psychic abilities weren't able to reveal much about those closest to him. Really for me, my process has to not be impeded by logic or by information. And so because it's me, because I have my own feelings and thoughts and expectations, that bias basically prevented me from being able to kind of connect intuitively. It was surreal, he says, to be on the other side of the reading for the first time. It felt like the tables kind of turned in the sense that I found myself in a very vulnerable position in a pursuit for answers. So I felt myself really feeling a sense of desperation. And I think it taught me and gave me an insight into closure. It's not really something you achieve as much as it's something that you have to kind of grow through and find acceptance around. For Teresa, the revelations brought an emotional release. Because I know I'm not related to her and I'm not like her. I know I'm a good person. But also raised new questions about the nature of family. It made me happy that Tyler doesn't have a grandmother who's a murderer. And the bittersweet part of that is that while she, it means that she's not my biological mother, it also means that my siblings that I love so much are not my biological siblings, but it doesn't matter because we're always going to be close. We learn in this journey the importance of asking questions. If there's blind spot, follow up. There's a up. reason. There's a reason. There are entire generations of silence, and it's yeah. important to break that silence and that the truth really can set you free. And coming up, we take you behind the scenes of some of the technology solving hundreds of cold cases. Stay with us. Desire, deception, and a double cross. The seduction, a deadly love story only Dateline and Keith Morrison can tell. Listen to the full season now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? You tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back and welcome to Authorum Labs. Since 2018, the technology in this lab has helped solve hundreds of cases. They've never let cameras in until now, and we've got the exclusive first look on how they solve the otherwise unsolvable. This is no longer something you see on TV that solves some cases here or there. So all of these cases that we're looking at here, these are the unsolvable cases before you guys came along. Absolutely. Just outside of Houston, Othram Labs is solving the unsolvable. So when it comes to your laboratory, when it comes to your tech and legacy tech, what's the, what's the main difference? So we're taking this really challenging evidence that's historically been unusable for testing, and then we're enabling testing, and then we're doing that with hundreds of thousands of markers instead of, say, tens of markers of what you do in a traditional forensic test. The Othram team combines medical and genomic expertise to revolutionize how forensic DNA is processed. If you go to, like, one of those consumer DNA companies to learn about your ancestry, you'll spit in a tube, and, and you'll generate uh, about 1,000 nanograms of DNA. At Othram, like, we, we work off 0.1 nanograms. Put it in a... perspective, how small is it? How small are we talking? So the equivalent would be 15 human cells. If I touch David's shoulder right now, I've left hundreds of cells right here. We were able to identify a perpetrator from a 32-year-old sex assault murder of a 14-year-old girl in Las Vegas with 0.12 nanograms of DNA left. The lab's run by husband and wife duo David and Kristen Middleman, 
He handles the science, she does the business. So I met David um, working on DNA together at Baylor College of Medicine 20 years ago. So we both have a science background and DNA background. Oh, so you guys met in the lab? We did. Um, I made um, blind mice and he cured them. So He cured the blind he mice? He did, and so I thought if he could do that, you'd probably fix any problem I create. So <laughs> I married him. The problem they're tackling now, America's backlog of cold cases. Experts estimate there are more than 250,000 unsolved murders in the country. We're often the last hope. Every time they give you that last bit of DNA or that last bit of evidence, that is someone's last chance of being identified. That is a family member's last chance of finding out what happened to their loved one and someone's last chance to get justice for what happened to the person that they lost. In 2018, we had noticed that several cases had been solved, the Golden State Killer, for example, using this type of technology, but but it was, it was from a bunch of different pieces, right? Correct. Was... And you notice that not all cases were being solved. And it really isn't justice unless you can provide it and apply it to every case. And that's when David said, well, there's no process to do so. And so he said, I'm going to build it. I'm going to build a forensic lab of the future. Here we're building kind of a molecular library of that DNA. So we're getting many copies of it, breaking it up into itty bitty pieces. And each little piece is like a book in the library that describes some component of the information about that case. And what this is, is a, it's the most powerful sequencer on Earth. How often are you breaking cases like this? How often are you calling law enforcement and saying, hey, I think every we've day. got a hit? Every now, day. Now, every day. Every single one of the samples in here, these all represent people that, that have not been identified. Yeah, they, they either represent victims or suspects to crimes. And so there are, there are countless numbers of folks in here um, that have never been identified through traditional methods. In, in almost every case that we've run, we've returned information that's been useful to the investigation. So we've seen it all. We've worked on a body that was found in a sewage tank for, for decades. We've worked on remains from 1881. We have worked on um, burnt remains, charred remains, and these are things that weren't possible a few years ago. Making the impossible possible, helping families and law enforcement find answers like in the 1974 abduction and murder of 17-year-old Carla Walker took my whole family. We were still a close family, but it was, and I'm sure you hear this quite often, it was never the same. Dothram was able to process a tiny DNA sample from Carla's bra strap. I, I had to look up what a nanogram was. It was so small. Those results, along with some good detective work, led investigators to arrest Glenn McCurley in 2020. I got a call around near 6 o'clock p.m. And one of the investigating detectives said, well, we got him. And he told me Glenn Samuel McCurley. And I'd never heard that name. Glenn McCurley was sentenced to life in prison for Carla's murder last year. Othram tracks some of its successes on DNAsolves.com, where anyone can donate money to fund their work. We've raised over $400,000 from crowd funds, from philanthropists, from people across the country that are just willing to help solve these investigations help clear some of these backlogs and help become sort of the model for how this would work if there was federal funding. But now for the first time ever, in a recent appropriations bill, Congress says it'll fund this type of forensic technology. With the work that you've done, what do you think forensics is gonna look like in 10 years? So I think we'll live in a world where there are no backlogs. People don't have to wait decades to find out what happened to their loved one. And perpetrators are caught the first time they commit a crime. So, so you think that you think that this could prevent crime in the future? I think it'd become a deterrent for crime. I would definitely think twice. I think if you've left DNA at a crime scene, it's a matter of time before someone like us or us processes that crime scene. Thank you for joining us this half hour for Cracking the Case, America's obsession with true crime. I'm Gotti Schwartz, and see you next time on Today All Day. Ooh, the answer's calling, you need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the moment. Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here?
Hello today all day. Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata making two protein-packed recipes with a pantry staple, canned chickpeas. First, she's going to use the chickpeas to make a hearty dinner with a chana masala and roasted sweet potatoes. For dessert, she's going to turn the legume into ooey, gooey, chocolatey brownies. We promise you won't even taste the chickpeas. Just get out your aggression on these sweet potatoes, okay? If you have any stress in your life, don't take it out on your friends. Make this recipe. Take it out on these potatoes. My life would not run without chickpeas. Whether in savory recipes or sweet, chickpeas are truly the legume loves of my life. I guess you could really say I'm a hashtag chickpea chick. I'm gonna show you two of my favorite recipes to use chickpeas, my chana masala stuffed sweet potatoes, and a delicious and surprising chickpea brownie. I know, once you make these recipes, you're gonna love chickpeas as much as I do. Chana masala, sometimes called chole, is a spiced chickpea curry that my mom used to make for me all the time when I was growing up. It's one of my favorite Indian vegetarian dishes, so today, I thought I'd get a little creative and stuff the chana masala inside some baked sweet potatoes. So, if baked potatoes are your vibe and spiced chickpeas are your vibe, then this is the recipe for you. I've got all of my cute sweet potatoes here. They're clean, so I'm just gonna poke them with a fork so they can release steam when they bake. Don't mistake your hand for a potato, okay? Promise me you won't do that. Keep your eyes on your goal. <laughs> all right, I definitely did some damage here. Now I'm just gonna rub these potatoes with some olive oil and then sprinkle with some salt. These potatoes are at the spa currently. They're loving their lives. They're about to go into the sauna. <laughs> I only find myself funny. The olive oil is gonna allow the sweet potatoes to get nice and crisp on the outside. I love eating the skin too, it's really yummy. Now, just a little sprinkle of salt. We can't forget to season everything. We need flavor everywhere. My cutie little potatoes are ready. They're going in the oven 40 to 45 minutes at 425 degrees. Now that my sweet potatoes are safely in the oven, they're secure in there, I am gonna start on my chana masala. First thing I'm gonna do is dice my onions. clearing my workspace, nothing to see here. I love using onions in basically everything, but onions, garlic, and ginger are just key aromatics in Indian cooking. You really can't have Indian cooking without them. Now for my garlic, just gonna mince it. A mince is really, really fine, so you just wanna get all of that delicious garlicky flavor out. You know you did this right if you smell like garlic for three days. We're just getting at all of that flavor. Now I'm just gonna use some ginger. A really easy way to peel ginger is to use a spoon. You can just use it to scrape back that little peel, like so. See how easy that is? Super easy. And I'm using only an inch here. Now I'm just gonna mince my ginger up super fine. Wanna extract all that flavor, just so it matches the garlic too. Okay, my onions, my garlic, my ginger, we're all ready, ready for the hot oil. So now I'm just gonna heat some oil in my medium pot until it shimmers, and then I'll add all of my aromatics. Heating up my olive oil in my pot. Once the oil shimmers, then I know it's ready for the onions. Taking a little peek. The olive oil is shimmering, so it's time to add my onions. I want to cook these onions in the olive oil until they're tender, translucent, and starting to brown around the edges. I want to get some color on them before I add the ginger and the garlic. And the reason that we're not adding the garlic and the ginger in with the onions is because those take a lot less time to cook. So we wanna get the onions going and then we'll add the ginger and garlic so those two don't burn. I think these onions are ready to meet their garlic and ginger companions. Garlic. Ginger. 
smell. Mmm. You want to cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions for about one to two minutes so it smells aromatic and fragrant. Get rid of that raw smell. This is my masala box, my masala dubba, my prized possession. I have literally never lived a single day in my kitchen without it. It's how I store all of my favorite spices. It's also how my mom taught me to store all of my spices. Let me show you a little reveal. Look at that. These are all my favorite spices that I use. And these are also the ones that are gonna go in my chana masala. My onions, garlic, and ginger smell amazing. They look amazing, which means it's time for my masala. I'm going to add some of my favorite masala spices here. I like to add cayenne for some heat, for some spice. Adding turmeric, one of my favorite spices. A lot of cumin. I absolutely love it. Time for some coriander powder. Adding that straight in. Did you know that coriander powder is just the seeds of cilantro ground up? Now you know. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. So I want to roast my masala spices until that raw masala smell goes away. We want to toast it, we want it to smell fragrant and aromatic. And finally, my little secret ingredient, umchur powder or dry mango powder. Umchur powder is so tangy, it's tart, it adds a little something extra into this chana masala. Adding umchur powder was definitely my mom's tip, so thank you mom for making my chana masala a lot better than it was before. I wish you could smell it, but you can't. So you're just gonna have to make it. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't make the rolls. But I am making them a little bit here. Okay, my masala smells amazing, smells super aromatic. Now I'm gonna add my tomato paste. Here. I'm gonna cook the tomato paste in with my onions and spices until it deepens in color. Now I'm gonna add my tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes for sure, but I'm using canned and crushed tomatoes because I think convenience is the most gorgeous thing. My tomatoes are looking delicious, delish. Now I'm gonna add my vegetable broth. Okay, I've brought everything to a boil. Now, I'm just gonna reduce to a simmer and cook uncovered for five minutes. We have to add a very important friend to the party. Our chickpeas. I could never forget about them. How could you think that? Adding them straight in here. Get them really up in that gravy. Now that the chickpeas have found a really nice home in here, I just want to simmer this together for 20 minutes. I want the gravy to become thick and the chickpeas to really infuse in with all of that masala. Make sure you cover this while it simmers. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. 
you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Welcome back to today. We got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available as available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, 20 minutes has passed. I think it's time we take a peek at my chana masala. I mean, look at that. Look how thick it is. It looks delicious. It smells even better. There is one more thing that I do like to add in my chana masala. It's just a little sneaky spinach. Nothing to see here. Just some sneaky spinach. You won't even see it or taste it. I just like to sneak in some cute greens in there from time to time, you know? Just adding a handful. I'm just gonna tear it, roughly. No science to that here. And I'm gonna stir it into my chana masala until it wilts. Speaking of something green, I do like to add a little bit of cilantro in here as well. Something zesty, herby, brings all of the flavors to light. I keep those tender stems, but I'll remove the thick stems like this. This doesn't have to be added to our chana masala. All this talk about cilantro has me craving something. My cilantro mint chutney. I'm gonna show you how to make that. I'm just gonna let this hang out while I do that. Let me just start off by saying that I love chutney. A life without chutney is one that I just don't wanna live. If you're not eating chutney, you are not living. Chutney is super popular in Indian food, especially Indian street food. I find that it's zesty, it's bright. It's usually with a lot of herbs, a lot of spices, a lot of lemon or something acidic. It's super delicious and really tangy. Let's make my favorite cilantro mint chutney. This, by the way, is so easy to make. You're just gonna throw everything in your blender. Just gonna get my cilantro ready. Again, just like in my chana masala, where it's okay to keep those tender stems on the cilantro, I'm just gonna keep the tender ones, but remove the thicker ones. These are a bit more bitter, so we don't want these in our chutney. Like I said, super simple recipe. You can add everything to our blender. I don't know why these vegetables are in here. They wanted their 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> Remove them. I'm gonna add my cilantro straight into my blender. Like that. Mint is super floral. It's very bright. So I find that it complements the cilantro really well. And anything you add this in is just gonna really awaken the flavors. If the flavors were sleeping, this chutney is gonna awaken the flavors. I love some heat, I love some spice. So we're gonna be adding a full green chili here. If you want it to be less spicy, you can de-seed it. But I will not be partaking in that. I want all the spice. Just gonna trim it, pop it straight in there. Guess I live life a little risky how I do. Just juicing a fresh lemon in. Nothing like some fresh lemon juice. It's gonna really brighten all of those flavors up. Add something a bit acidic, which we need with all of those zesty herbs. Now for my spices, I'm gonna add some salt and a little cumin. My precious box. Little cumin. And some salt. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to help get the blender going. You can feel free to add more water as you blend just if you need to get the blender moving a bit more. Texture looks great. Oh, it's 
smells so good too. That, as you can see, some nice texture. I wanted this to be a little thinner because I will be drizzling it on top of my chana masala stuffed sweet potatoes. I'm gonna set this aside, go check on my potatoes, and then I'm gonna get ready to plate. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Who made Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I mean... It is literally oozing sweetness. Look at that caramelization. <sighs> okay, so I have to tell you something. Chana masala is typically served with roti, naan, or rice, but I wanted to get a little fun here, a little creative, so I'm gonna stuff my chana masala into my sweet potatoes. And I'll take it back now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. I think we're ready to plate. I think I'm ready to eat. That I know for sure. I am gonna get this potato right here. That is the one that I want. This is the chosen one. Look at all of that sugar that's just caramelized around the edges. <gasps> okay, you need to look at this. Do you see this? Do you see it? Okay. Onto my plate we go. Love a sweet potato. Love, literally love. Time to bring my chana masala into the picture. I'm gonna move these guys aside. I will see you later. Time for you. Does everyone talk to their food like I do? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. I'm gonna cut my sweet potato. Just create a little slit right here. Just a little home for that chana masala to sit in. Look at that steam. Mm. Perfect. Now it's time for my chana masala. Oh, that smells so good. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything, that thick gravy, the chickpeas, my sneaky spinach. It fits perfectly. Little home for my chana masala. Great. Okay. Now, did not forget about my cilantro chutney. This is gonna add some brightness, some freshness. And a little bit of spice. Now, 
just for a little bit of glam, we're gonna add some chopped, or I should say torn cilantro. A little on the plate, just to, you know, aesthetics. I can assure you that my mom has never done this before, so I have to show her a picture. I wanna see what she's gonna think. She will be proud of this chana masala though, because that looks pretty good. Mom, I hope you're proud. That looks so pretty. Aesthetically speaking, this looks amazing. Can I eat this now? I think yes, I think yes, I can eat this now. I mean, this literally can do no wrong. It's hearty, it's satisfying, it's filling. It's very balanced. I think I really leveled up baked potatoes today. Perfect weeknight dinner. That caramelization on that sweet potato is just getting me. I just can't even handle it. Looks so good. We all think of chickpeas in something like a chana masala, right? But here's the secret, I really like to bake with them in my desserts. I know, I know you're questioning my life choices right now, but just you wait. I'm gonna go get the ingredients for my chickpea brownies. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. we got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody good, and that's it! Yeah. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. It's a can't miss summer on today. Bam! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. These chickpea brownies are one of the most popular recipes on my blog. And because I know you're wondering, I know you're asking the question, can you taste the chickpeas? All I have to say to you is no. All they do is simply create an irresistible fudgy texture. And with chocolate involved, everyone wins. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna add in here is some almond butter. I like this because it's kind of rich, it's nutty. It adds a lot to these brownies. Now we're gonna add my chickpeas, my most valuable pantry player, my MVPP, my chickpeas. Make sure before you add these chickpeas into your blender, you rinse them super, super well. And just remember, the chickpeas don't add any flavor to these brownies. All they do is help to create a really nice fudgy texture and make it really satiating when you eat it. Now I'm gonna go for some vanilla extract. Delish. To sweeten these chickpea brownies up, I'm gonna use some coconut sugar. Beautiful. Now, for my flour in these brownies, I'm not actually using a bunch of it at all. I'm gonna use some almond flour. It's kind of dense, it's delicious. It's also gonna help create a nice and fudgy brownie. What I like about almond flour is that it's just almonds, right? So that creates some really good texture and also a really nice nutty finish. Okay, we've gotta have a little bit of cocoa powder. 
I'm using unsweetened cocoa powder here. This is really important. We don't want anything added to our cocoa powder. We want it to be pure. And we're already adding sugar to our brownie, so no need to buy a sweetened cocoa powder. To help everything blend, I'm gonna add some almond milk now and a little bit later too. Are you ready for the blender brownies of your dreams? Are you ready to not make a smoothie and make brownies instead? Same. Okay, here we go. Perfection, perfection. I'm gonna scrape the sides down, give it another little blend. You want it to be super, super smooth. You literally never know there are chickpeas in here. It's actually kind of scary. <laughs> okay, you gotta look at this texture. You just, you gotta look at this texture. Come on now, that's just not fair. Super velvety, really smooth. Just needs one thing, chocolate chips. Cause it's me. And why would I make a brownie without chocolate chips? It just doesn't seem right. Make sure you remove this from the blender before you add your chocolate chips so you don't blend up some chocolate chips into the air. Know that it's not speaking from personal experience. I'm gonna fold in my chocolate chips. I do not measure this with anything but my heart and my soul. Now it's time to transfer into my pan. I gotta get a shot of this. The texture is luscious. <gasps> I know, there's chickpeas in here, isn't that crazy? You really could fool a lot of people. I'm not saying do that. I'm not saying trick people, but like, I'm just saying you could. Have you ever wondered what the difference is between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? Well, I have news for you. There is no difference. They're the same thing. Garbanzo is just the Spanish term for a chickpea. This just looks nice, honestly, plus a little extra chocolate never hurt anyone. <laughs> I gave up. Okay, we are ready for the oven. Going in 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes, and I'm so excited for their journey. My pride and joy, my chickpea brownies. I've let them cool for 25 minutes. This is important because it lets them firm up. And when they come out of the oven, you know that they're done when they start to pull away from the sides of the pan. Look at how easy parchment paper makes my life. All right. I mean, look at how fudgy that is. Delish. All that has to happen, it's time for me to eat it. Okay, I think I'm ready to taste. Oh, it's so fudgy. Mmm. This is my party trick, putting chickpeas into brownies. I just need to take a picture of that interior, that fudgy bit. Mm. It's too good. It is crazy how you can't taste the chickpeas. They just add to that really nice fudgy texture. We've got some rich chocolate, so they taste super decadent, but they're also super satiating so fudgy, melt in your mouth, the extra chocolate chips. Nobody's mad about that. I'm not mad about it. I hope this inspired you to use chickpeas in new and fun, unique ways, even baking them into brownies. Now you know why they're so versatile and also why they're the legume love of my life.
you ever just look around and say, I can't believe we did this? Yes, totally. That was like the light bulb moment. I got up there and I just said I quit my job and started this company. And I just kept going. It was a lot of testing and learning. There's been a lot of tears along the way. We can actually change the world. When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it? Hi everyone and welcome to She Made It, where we celebrate female entrepreneurs who are shaking up industries, building brands, and climbing their way to the top. And today, we are bringing the heat because it is our Get Ready for Summer edition. For the next half hour, we're highlighting 12 incredible women in beauty, fashion, and fitness. They're helping us feel confident and prepare for the season ahead. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list featuring three small businesses I've had my eye on. From effortless beachwear to organic cocktails, I've got some fabulous summer staples coming your way. Trust me, you're going to want to shop and support. So, let's get started. First up, an absolute summer essential, sunscreen. We usually put it on and forget it, but Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard is on a mission to change that. In fact, she says sunscreen isn't just for summertime. She created her multi-million dollar brand 16 years ago, and it all started from a product with a purpose. You have to inspire people and, and build beautiful products so that people want to put it into their life every single day. There's no doubt Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard is the queen of sunscreen. Are you wearing a shirt that says sunscreen all over it? Wear sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> but before she was shaking things up in the world of SPF, Holly was a teacher and a professional harpist. What I find the most fascinating, you were in a totally different world. I was a third grade school teacher out of college and I still believe that I'm still teaching. You don't necessarily need to be in a classroom to be a teacher. 16 years ago, Holly was inspired to change what the world thought about sunscreen when a close friend of hers was diagnosed with skin cancer at the age of 29. Another good college friend of mine who's now a renowned dermatologist said to me, you know, Holly, it's really that little bit of incidental damage that you get every single day. Um, it's not about beaches and bikinis. Was that the first sort of aha moment that you were like, okay, we need to pay attention? Absolutely. There are not many cancers that are primarily preventable with a magic lotion. When I looked at the category though, the chemical formulas were itchy and irritating and sunscreen had a very negative reputation back in 16 years ago. I thought, gosh, if we want people to wear SPF every single day, there needed to be a product. And so I, I started to dream about SPF. Holly began meeting with chemists to create a formula that was both clean and free of harmful ingredients. So after bootstrapping her business, Supergoop was born in 2005. As a mother of two, her original business plan was to get sunscreen into classrooms, but discovered it wasn't that easy. I quickly learned that it's thought of as an over-the-counter drug. No one had advocated to carve a policy out that would allow SPF to be brought to school or available in the classroom. Undeterred, Holly pivoted her sunscreen brand to retail for selling in local stores until a buyer from Sephora's headquarters in San Francisco discovered her product. She called the number on the packaging, which was, of course, my cell phone. Right, you're like, call me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, I don't think you're quite ready for Sephora, but I want to give you some tips and tricks and then keep in touch with me. And one of those was, you've got to get your press built up. And we spent two years building my press book. I dialed her back and I left her a voicemail that I was coming to San Francisco and I was ready to sit down and talk. She didn't call me back, but I flew out there with no meetings on the calendar. I was completely broke. And the first night I got there, my phone lit up. It said Sephora. And she said, I think you might be here. Um, can you come in and sit down and talk to us? The meeting was a success, and in 2011, Supergoop was on Sephora shelves all across the country, 365 days a year. So now you're a multi, multi-million dollar company. We are, and we've been, uh, we're going into our third year of profitability, which is so exciting for me because if you're not profitable, you're not sustainable. Today, Holly's original mission of providing SPF to young kids has come full circle. With their ounce by ounce giving program, Supergoop ships a free pump of sunscreen to classrooms across America. Do you feel like you've made enough of an impact or 
do you still feel like you have so much to change? Today, fast forward, I think it's because of our products. It's because of the fun and playful spirit of this brand that we've been able to change and actually create a new category. What's next for Supergroup? Oh gosh, Jill, more of the same. Game-changing SPF innovation that's never been done before is what wakes me up in the morning and helping others inspire a world in which they embrace this habit and embrace it as a family. Just incredible, and I'm obsessed with these products. And since our segment first aired, Supergoop launched new SPF innovations, including the Daily Dose Hydroceramide Boost and SPF 40 Oil, the first ever combined SPF and skin barrier protection oil. And they launched the Every Single Face SPF 50, a universal and undetectable sunscreen with a refreshing, cooling feel. So incredible and what an awesome story. All right, now we need to figure out what to wear when we hit the beach or pool. Last year, I talked with two women who joined forces after a serendipitous meeting in New York City. They created Somersault, a swimwear brand that's making serious waves. Take a look. Women were ready to have a brand that would speak to them, but we also recognize what we could do together. And it truly has been an amazing partnership. When Lori Coulter and Reshma Chaturam Chamberlain were introduced eight years ago, they soon realized they had met their match. Swimwear for all your adventures. Lori and Reshma are the co-founders of Somersault, the direct-to-consumer women's apparel brand that's reinventing the swimwear shopping experience. But for these serial entrepreneurs, it was a partnership that almost didn't happen. No path is the same, and the puzzle pieces all have to come together energy-wise. And yours is a very interesting one. I met Lori at a networking event in St. Louis. She was just instantaneously helpful. And we kept in touch over time. And then in June, June. of 16, mm -hmm. we sat down to have kind of a networking lunch, and a lot sparked from there. I went away from that conversation unbeknownst to her, inspired to write the initial business plan and strategy for what is now Somersault. And six months later, I tried to hire her agency, and turns out um, she wasn't taking on new clients. But as luck would have it, the two ran into each other at a bar in New York City. I had been kind of marching towards launch, had the deck and the line sheet with me and literally cornered her and said, let's look at this. And Jill, when we say Lori cornered me, this is absolutely not an exaggeration. Like a literal, she literally cornered Literally me. cornered me. <laughs> and we went through everything. And for me, it was like, ding, ding, ding. Like, this is exactly what I had been waiting for. I asked her if she wanted a co-founder on the spot. And she said, Yes, let's talk about it. They both got to work, meeting every weekend determined to design a sustainable brand focused on body inclusivity and diversity. Bathing suit shopping, I think I speak for most women that no matter how good of shape you feel in or don't feel in, it's just the lighting in the room, the shopping, it's just an exhausting experience. So what white space did you see and that made you say, okay, somersault is different? really no one was owning truly designer quality swimwear for an affordable price point. We also used 10,000 women's body scans and 1.5 million measurements of real women to create our fit. When you think about swimwear for the last, you know, 40, 50 years, it was really all about just one view of what women should be, whereas we're all so different. Like I'm an immigrant from India, Lori grew up in Missouri. So we wanted to create a brand that truly reflected the diverse community of women that needed swimwear. In just five months, with more than $600,000 in initial investments, Lori and Reshma launched Somersault in May 2017. But raising capital had its challenges. We have a spreadsheet of like 100 people who just said no over and over and over again. We've raised over $26 million to date, and you know the rest is really history. Today, Somersault is thriving and growing, now expanding to sleepwear and loungewear. What is it like to see women walking around in your clothing. Honestly, Jill, if anyone wears somersault, we are just thrilled. We have moms who are like, oh my gosh, I haven't put on a swimsuit in so long and I'm so excited. And it is such a milestone every time. And every time we get one of those photos, whether it's from the customer. Never gets it old. It never, get, it, it it never gets old. It absolutely never gets old. Lori and Rishma also told me Somersault is launching its 
third installment of their flagship size inclusivity campaign called Everybody is a Somersault Body, featuring 27 inspiring women. They also have six limited edition collaborations launching this summer, a host of new colors across its collection, as well as brand new styles. Can't wait. Up next, from jewelry and personalized accessories to empowering workouts, I've got four small businesses to make you look and feel your best this summer. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Now I have four fabulous women who can help us get summer ready. And who doesn't love summer jewelry? We know Chari Cutbrook does. She created her own personalized jewelry business by Chari with just $100 in her bank account. Take a look. My grandmother Colleen had the most interesting jewelry. That's probably where my fascination for jewelry and deep appreciation for sentimental pieces began. After leaving my corporate job at 28, I was burnt out and had no idea what I was going to do next. A few months later, I moved to Hawaii and decided to focus on turning my passionate hobby for jewelry into a career. So with $100, no formal training, and a lot of ambition, Bai Shari was born. Over the next four years, I grew the brand by expanding into fine and personalized jewelry and used Instagram as a launch pad to reach customers all over the world. But it was a customized gift for my best friend Rocky Barnes that would change the focus and structure of the company. The Space Letter Necklace was born, and it's now one of our most popular selling items. I love that every word, name, or letter they choose has a memory, story, or sentimental meaning behind it. Expanding a small business meant taking a deep breath and a big leap, so I packed up and headed back to Los Angeles. I now have a team of five diverse and incredibly talented women. Each time someone opens a Baishari box and puts on a piece of my jewelry and feels special because of it, it's a job and a dream brought to life. Such beautiful pieces and a beautiful story after being featured on our show back in 2020. By Chari had their biggest day in sales, surpassing profits made on days like Black Friday. Wow. And at the 2020 Democratic National Convention, former First Lady Michelle Obama wore their vote necklace. How cool is that? They've also got some new collections like these pieces inspired by the Hawaiian Summer Beautiful. Aren't they great? All right, now I want you to meet Kylie Kaufman, a woman whose family inspired her to build a business while giving back, one baby step at a time. It all started in June 2015 when my niece Charlotte was born with an extra chromosome, also known as Down syndrome. As a first time aunt, I wanted to get her something special. I created a monogram keepsake box filled with baby items. This was the basis for my first business, Rock-A-Box Baby, which I launched in 2017. Fast forward to when the pandemic hit. Charlotte was struggling, she was high risk for COVID, having trouble with virtual learning, and lost her socialization and routine. Inspired to help her and others with special needs, I rebranded, expanded my product offerings to include a new jewelry line, and committed to give back 15% of profits each month to an organization that supports Down syndrome and special needs. On October 1st, 2020, Lot 321 launched. 
Lot comes from the name Charlotte, and 321 is an ode to three copies of the 21st chromosome. Business is booming, and one day, I hope Charlotte takes over. And get this, Charlotte is turning seven next month. Happy birthday, Charlotte. Lot 321 sales skyrocketed in the days following our segment, airing with people emailing charity suggestions, which has helped the company expand their impact nationwide. And since then, they've donated tens of thousands of dollars to Down syndrome and special needs awareness. This month, they are working with Sandal Gap Studio. How wonderful and beautiful is that? All right, you know what else is synonymous with summer? Weddings, I know more than anyone. And it was her own wedding that sparked a life-changing idea for entrepreneur, Teddy Lightman. My name is Teddy Lightman. After getting engaged in 2017, I was on a mission to find a unique gift for my bridesmaids. When I couldn't find something memorable yet affordable, I took matters into my own hands. Using my background in fashion, I sourced and created the perfect one-of-a-kind acrylic clutch and my bridesmaids were thrilled. Right away, I realized I was on to something. I started a side hustle out of my small apartment, creating bags for friends and family. When I was laid off from my day job in 2018, I was devastated, but saw a silver lining. The opportunity to develop and grow my handbag company full time. In July 2018, I officially launched Ray of Light, a customizable accessories company that specializes in perfect gifts for all occasions. These bags are a triumph. I actually wore my Jill bag this past weekend. And right after the segment first aired, Ray of Light had thousands of people on their website at once, over 3,000. They have since launched several new customizable products, all under $100. That's things like tote bags, hats, and kids' bags, among others. And it just continues to grow. We love to hear that. All right, summertime and getting outdoors inspires a lot of us to get moving. And that's what this next entrepreneur is all about. Megan Rope's company is all about empowering women and helping them dance their way to happiness. I was a recent graduate from NYU's Tisch Dance Program, performing for the MBA's Brooklynettes and still feeling a little lost. I started teaching dance-based fitness as a side hustle and immediately knew it was what I was meant to do. In March of 2017, I took a leap of faith, launched the Sculpt Society, and started teaching in-person classes. A fun, effective workout for dancers and non-dancers alike. At first, if I had two people in my class, it was a good day, but I gave it my all every time. Through word of mouth, my class grew. A handful of celebrities and Victoria's Secret models even became regulars. In November of 2019, the Sculpt Society app went live, giving users around the world access to live and on-demand classes from their homes. Whether five minutes or 50, dance, sculpt, yoga, or meditation, there is something for everyone. To see my community grow and dance together has been the most rewarding part of my career. Well, we all got used to these during the pandemic. And since the pandemic, the Sculpt Society hosted their first digital retreat last year with over 2,000 participants. They were also able to connect with their community in real life with events in New York, Boston, Chicago, and LA. Tickets sold out in less than 20 minutes. And each stop had over 100 attendees. The Sculpt Society is gearing up for their second in-person tour this summer in more cities across the U.S. and Canada. Hooray! All right, coming up, we're not done working up a sweat. We have two women who do it all. One feel-good workout at a time. Stick around, we'll be right back. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? 
ABC News exclusive. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to our Get Ready for Summer edition of She Made It. And these next two entrepreneurs bring the summer energy all year round. Back in 2020, I spoke to J.C. Lambros and Danielle D'Angelo, two former Radio City Rockettes who do it all while building a community of powerful women. Take a look. We weren't great friends. We were more acquaintances, I would call it. But now she's now like she's a an lamb. appendage. There we go. <laughs> right, no. right. J.C. Lambros and Danielle D'Angelo's friendship kicked up when they shared the stage as Radio City Rockettes 12 years ago. Today, they are the co-founders behind Jane Do, a women's fitness brand that's on a mission to foster a community of confident women through their curated feel-good workouts. So tell me about Jane Do. So we like to say Jane is every woman and Do is her call to action. So the idea is that we want women to build strength in the studio and then use it outside the studio to do incredible things where it actually matters. This is more about wellness and being your own best friend. And we focus on the gains rather than the losses. It's a message they've carried with them since leaving the Rockettes. After the season was over, JC found herself figuring out her next step. I had this incredible passion for fitness. I saw a void in the local market in Jersey City. I knew we could build off that, and I knew I couldn't do it alone. Without any business experience, JC put together a plan and showed Danielle, who was immediately on board. I was really excited to jump back into our passion for dance and also fuse it with our love of fitness. And just six weeks later, the pair launched their fitness business. But there was one problem. Their studio was far from ready. We saw the ceiling coming down on top of us. I think that was a moment literally, that we literally, literally, literally crumbles. Danielle took down. a broom and she hit the ceiling and it came falling and down. And it came falling down. That didn't stop JC and Danielle from moving forward. It gave us the opportunity to do some pop-up classes, which we encourage anyone that is getting started or has any hiccups in their business plan to find a creative way to then turn it into a positive. They built a loyal following of 150 clients before their doors finally opened eight months later. With a combined $40,000 in savings, the former Rockettes self-funded their brand. There's no venture capitalist behind this. This is money that you saved from when you were a Rockettes that you put back in the business and continue to just put it back in the business. Every dime we make, goes we put back, back in. We've cashed out our 401ks. These doers owe their success to being resourceful. Scrappy. We're the scrappiest broads you'll ever meet. So, right. What does that mean to you, scrappy? It means flipping couches to get stuff done. If you told me five years today, it would be plunging the toilets, we'd be painting the walls, but nobody else is gonna do it if you don't do it yourself. So now you have five studios. Five studios. A lot of toilets to plunge. <laughs> <laughs> and in just five years, their risks have paid off. With studios in New Jersey and New York, an average of 3,000 Janes visit each week. And this Jane is ready for a workout. All right, I'm all Janes out. Let's do this! Am I a Jane? It's official, you're a Jane. I'm a Jane. Welcome to the team. Yay! Well, since we spoke to JC and Danny, they celebrated their grand opening at Jane Do Charleston. They also launched Jane Do Digital, where you can work out with Jane anytime, anywhere. And their family is also growing. JC and her husband, Anthony, welcome their daughter, Lenny, on February 14th, Valentine's Day. Oh, look at that adorable baby. All right, coming up, three women-owned small businesses that will help you get vacation ready. Stay with us. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on yes. this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. I'm so jazzed because now we even have more brands from female founded companies that I'm excited to share with you on my She Made It It list. I'm bringing you three fabulous businesses with amazing summer staples to get you ready for the warmer months. Okay, let's start with Sea Star Beachwear. Now, Sea Star Beachwear was founded in 2015 by Libby Fitzgerald. After she spent over 20 years raising her family, she started her own company. When Libby was vacationing with her teenage boys in the Caribbean, she was wearing flimsy, unattractive water shoes, and her boys were quick to call her out course. Ultimately, she saw a white space in the market for a well-made water shoe that combines fashion and function. Sea Star has reimagined the traditional espadrille designs with breathable, quick-drying neoprene upper and a protective rubber sole. Their shoes easily transition from ocean swimming to rocky beaches or rainy city pavement, and they dry in 15 minutes. I wear these. They have great ones. I have ones that say L-O and then V-E. Super fun. All right. Next up, some summer beverages, courtesy of Tipsy Lady Cocktails. They were founded by Caribbean American and Charleston resident Tony Gilliard. As a black female entrepreneur, Tony prides herself on tipping the scales in the alcohol industry towards female ownership, hence her company name, and has pledged to donate a percentage of all profits to youth entrepreneurs' HIP programs with a focus on diversity. Tony previously spent 17 years as a lawyer and real estate agent before she was compelled to create her own natural, organic, and eco-friendly canned cocktail line with a strong emphasis on style, femininity, elegance, and authenticity. Tipsy ladies ready to drink Caribbean-inspired cocktails celebrate heritage, culture, and spice. Tipsy Lady cocktails are available for shipping in select U.S. states. Delicious. All right, last but definitely not least, we have a very popular brand, Therese. Therese is a fashion lifestyle brand that specializes in vibrant, high-performance activewear and everyday styles for girls and women. How cute is this? Founded in New York City by Zara Therese Tisch to spread joy and positivity, Therese celebrates connection, heart, and female empowerment. Through flashy and dynamic leggings, sports bras, biker shorts, loungewear, and beyond. Therese has over 530 products on the site and is sold at retailers such as Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, Shopbop, and Amazon. Zara originally launched Therese in 2008 in her New York City parents' basement with handbags. A mother of three kids and a forever optimist, Zara is a ball of energy with a vibrant creative streak and believes in embracing life to the fullest. If you follow her on Instagram, you'll get that instantly. How much fun is that? Well, that is all, unfortunately, for She Made It, and I think we are ready for summer. Thanks for watching, and remember to shop all these small businesses. Scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen or head over to today.com slash shop. I'm Jill Martin, and I will definitely see you next time.
Oh, oh, oh. Hello. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? Not from you. <laughs> How are you? Good. Nice to see you. I mean, this day and this garden is just for you. How beautiful is it up here? Incredible. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on. Let's talk Legos. Legos. <laughs> Legos. <laughs> Was that hello, like, sounded deep enough for it to be bell and button talk, or not really? You have to kind of bring it down from here. Okay. You have to hello. go. Hello. No, no, no. Not, <laughs> your hand. Hello. hello. And then you go up high. Oh, okay. You start low and go up. Hello. High. Yeah. No. No. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's just a stupid thing. Well, I'm sure it's stupid. <laughs> about me, is it? No. Not at all. No, me. All right. You know this girl, Claire, I'm seeing? Yeah. Well, he and I started joking that when she falls asleep, her stomach stays awake all night and talks to me. How's he talking? Well, the belly button's like a mouth. I'm bored. <laughs> OK, so you've played a lot of different Jerry's. Do you know what I mean? You've had the big puffy sleeve Jerry. Yes, I, on the Today Show. Yes. We debuted the puffy shirt on the Today Show with Brian Gumbel. That is a very, very unusual shirt you have on. <laughs> you know, yeah. They're all kind of, kind of puffed up. Yeah, it's a puffy shirt. <laughs> you look kind of like a pirate. <laughs> yeah, like a pirate. Anyway, uh, you know, we're hoping to um, raise enough money with the you know, you know, with this. <laughs> look, I'm sorry. It is just a very unusual shirt. It could be kind of a whole new look for you. You know, you could put a, a patch over an eye. You could kind of like be the pirate comedian. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. had some iconic looks. Yeah. What made you think, okay, it's time naturally to be a Lego Jerry? Well, who doesn't want to be a Lego? It's Lego Seinfeld. He's blocky. He's stoppy. He has sea hands. What are we selling here? <laughs> Lego, the reason people love Lego is because they, it clicks together. And once it clicks, it fits. It's tight. And it makes sense. Yes. And the world doesn't make sense. But Lego, you can, you can order the universe with Lego. You can make sense of something. Yeah. If you follow the instructions and you complete the model, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I have three little kids. Have you ever stepped on a Lego in the middle of the night? It's painful, yeah. It's not a great thing. You're no. right that they make sense. There's, there's moments where you want to throw them, though. Yeah. Does that, They're is fun that, to throw, too. Is that sort of makes is that sort of you? You know, they're like, Jerry, you make sense, but there's moments where you're like, no, that doesn't I've work. never stepped on a Lego, but it does seem like a killer. OK. In this short, you say, but I don't want to be a Lego. <laughs> right. But you actually wanted to be a Lego. You, this was I your did, idea. yeah. How, what was the genesis? Uh, the genesis was Lego made a model of my TV show set. And Netflix bought the TV show and wanted to do a promo. And I went, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why can't I be a Lego? And then I, and then I really wanted to do the line again. I don't want to be a pirate. But I, yeah, but I don't want to be a Lego. But I don't want to be a Lego. I know. I, somehow that that is a hard octave to match. You know, there's a whininess to that that's really hard to do. It's it, these are some of the little subtle things of comedy that are very important. So, what did your wife and kids think when you told them you were turning into? They loved it. I got the idea from my son, who was wanted to build his last Lego. He's 16. He thinks he said, you know, I think I got one more Lego <laughs> left in me. One more. I go, why don't you do the set from my TV show. We were walking along and I went, oh, that's the promo. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make Netflix shrink me down. <laughs> shrink you down and pour actual Lego cereal yes. into your mouth. There, you, the set is incredible. It's exactly like it's your amazing. set. Tell me some of the details you love. I, I love the couch and I love the refrigerator and the stove. And I love wearing the costume. Some of those bits, like, you know, when I skate out in the yes. end, that took an hour and a half oh. of moving an inch at a time. And when I sit down on the couch, that took an hour and a half. The stop motion is not done with humans. Yeah. It's done with props. You know, the last person to do it was Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer. Oh, really? Yes. Humans don't do stop motion. We do it with toys and props. <laughs> you don't ask a person to do this. And now this. 
<laughs> and now this, you know. But the fact that, so first of all, somebody told me about this and I thought like, no, no, he, Jerry Seinfeld's not becoming a Lego. Yeah. <laughs> and then they told me you shot it last week. Yeah, last week. So how much fun was it? There was a lot of laughter. It was insane. <laughs> we, it was just this crazy, everybody, we had to hire an animation company to do the stop motion because I wanted it to be stop motion. And then to build that set, that was all custom made out of foam and then paint and then the plastic finish to make it shiny. I mean, we worked so hard on it. Well, it was so much fun. I bet it was. Yeah. So the amazing Brian Cranston, who is a Tony winner, an Emmy winner, yeah. Oscar nominated. Yeah. You call him on the phone and you're like, hey, you want to be a Lego? He's not a well, Lego. Well, he's an announcer. He's an announcer. Coming this fall to Netflix. 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 Net 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 Seinfeld. 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 You call him on the phone and say, want to be in a Lego short? Yeah. And his response was? Love to. He says, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but I trust you. That's what he said. Did you notice the little dentist chair at the end? I sure did. That's Was the that little, a nod uh, to him? I think that's a cookie, what we call a cookie. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe that would have been a stranger conversation, but it was just pretty basic. Want to be in a Lego short? Let's if, do it. If you're a comedy person, which Brian is, even though he's done a lot of yes. drama, and someone gives you a crazy idea, you go, yeah, that sounds crazy. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So the last couple years, people have been at home on their couches. Right. Is this, is there like a lot of creativity spurring up in you? Is that why things like this are happening or not really? Maybe. I didn't think about that, but maybe. I, I personally have a, a feel like I really need to have some fun. I really need to make fun things for people. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do this. I go, this is just fun and silly. And I don't see enough of that. Yeah. I like that. It, does, it will make people laugh for yeah. sure. So Netflix has picked up all of these episodes. Yes. Do you think the world's ready? I don't know. <laughs> they weren't when we started back in 89, that's for sure. It took a number of years before people said, what are, what are they talking about? How do they talk? I know that's kind of interesting. So it didn't catch on right away? No, it took four years. The first four years of the show, it was poorly received very poorly received. That's forgotten now. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so how did you all have the patience just to wait it through? Well, um, in those days on television, if you got a good demo, yeah. uh, the advertisers wanted to be on your show. So even though we were not good, <laughs> we got a certain audience that was buying like BMWs. So that kept us on the air. Um, I, tell me about being a Lego, the, transforming. It did not look comfortable, I have to tell you. It was okay. I, I was fine with it. I just wanted to be it so bad. <laughs> I wanted to be in the toy. Seems like, you know, so if, it you bought, if you bought that toy, yeah, 
and you could get me shrunk yes. down in it. Wouldn't that be the ultimate? I'd be very into having you as a Lego, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I, I was worried about you because it looked like oh. there was a little bit of a wedgie in this area. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, there's lots of... Just issues. between you and me, we want... There, was a there a little issues, wedgie? A lot of issues below the waist. It looks yeah. like it. Yeah. I mean, that, that round area. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay. Um, I loved Netflix's press release. It was brilliant. Did you read it? The new show thing? Yeah. Yeah. It said Netflix will launch 180 episodes of a situational comedy called Seinfeld, created by rising New York comedian Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, who wrote for Saturday Night Live for a single season. That's right. So how did you feel about, I mean, the fact that they would take a chance on a young New Yorker just like you, did that feel good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did. And to make that many shows, not knowing. If anyone was going to like it, it was quite a gamble. It really yeah. was. Thank you, Netflix. Yeah. Sitting here with this beautiful view in Rockefeller Center, New York's been through a lot. Yes. You wrote a really beautiful article that I feel like everybody posted online. Um, what does it feel like to be here on this day, beautiful fall day in a city that you love so much? I am uh, humbly uh, proud of uh, that I stuck up for my town. Yeah. I, I just love this town. And, you know, I, I know, I grew up you know, all around here, so you, you know the people, you know what they're made of. You know, you, you're, not, you're not getting rid of this. There is nothing like this anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a resilience. To yes, it, right? yes. And on a day like this, there's nowhere better to be. No, no, it has a, New York on a beautiful day is really magical. It really is. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm just wondering, as a Lego, could could Elaine do her dance? Like, what would that look like? It would be like? a lot of clicking and yeah. clacking. Kind yeah. of like in, in the knee area? Yeah, the, some of the plastic might crack. Now, does a Lego have a belly button? No. No, so, just I mean, shirt buttons. How would you talk from your belly button? That'd be a really hard thing. Well, we're not going to do the whole series. <laughs> I, have, okay, I have to tell not. you the truth. <laughs> It was really just a joke. Oh, you're not doing, I no. thought you were doing the whole series as a Lego. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the way it looks, but no, we couldn't do it. <laughs> Too expensive, right? Yeah, yeah. These days. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The biggest grievance of 2021 so far. And you don't have to have one if you don't want one. Oh, I've got one? tons. <laughs> um, sounds like a plan. That's because it is a plan. That's what the sound was. Just tell me what time you want to meet. Stop saying the thing sounds like a plan. You know what? Actually, Hoda and I, are, and, and actually Savannah, we're in a fight over the word literally. 
because we think oh, it's overused. Way overused. Are you on my side? Totally. They're like, totally well, literally, too, it's, the literally it's freezing out here. I'm yeah. like, no, it's just cold. It's just freezing. If it was literally freezing, yeah. you would have frostbite. That's right. Okay, so you want to tell Hoda that you're on my side? I'm on Jenna's side, Hoda. Stop with the literally. Thank you. It's not a book to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, if we want to talk literal, yeah. let's go to talk Jane Austen. You yeah. know what I mean? You go away from New York for a couple months. What's the first thing you do when you come back? Just walk. A walk in New York is like reading a novel. The, you see snippets. Of, you know, I love that people yap on the phone out loud. <laughs> I love hearing half a conversation. I you do, know? too. I, it's fun, right? I yeah. don't find it annoying. No, I, really I don't like find it. it annoying. In fact, when we go to restaurants, I'm like, honey, they're getting divorced. He's like, can you pay attention to me? Yeah. It's hard not to. Musical artist that you listen to that would surprise some people. Do you like music? I love music. That would surprise some people. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would surprise them. I really love John Denver. That's not a surprise. I, I love uh, America. I love the band America. I, and I really love uh, Malo, who they had a song called Suavecito, which is my favorite song. <laughs> is it really? Suavecito. Can you sing a little bit of Suavecito mm. to me? La, 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 <laughs> la, la, la. Sound familiar? No. You know this song, Jenna, you know Suavecito? this song. Suavecito? You know Suavecito. You don't know that you know it. It's one of the greatest Latin Suavecito. Song. Yeah. Is that it? No. I'm thinking Despes Despacito. It's not Despacito. Do you know Despacito by yes. the Bieber? Yes, Despacito, no, no. es suavecito. <laughs> okay, okay. It's um, diferente. So I felt like I needed to say, hello. Is that better? Right. No. Is it what? Was that better? Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Is that, what's the number one Seinfeld line that people yell at you when you're walking the streets? Um, they yell, um, Where's Kramer? A lot. I don't know why I'm expected to be with him at all times. They yell, where's Kramer? What do you say? I go, he's not real. <laughs> he's not real. Um, uh, this is sort of a strange one, but last picture you took on your iPhone. I hope, it, only if it's, in a, if it's not appropriate. It's always, uh, of course, I don't do anything okay. not appropriate. Okay, the last picture I took, well, it's a, it's a small story. Okay, we've got the time, as long okay. as you do. I like, I like, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. I like funny uh, pet stuff. Yeah, and I saw I you do. a bulldog <laughs> riding a skateboard. Uh, and it was so cute, and I was so fascinated. And I just thought, that they just showed how this bulldog, he just loves his skateboard, he loves it. And I go, that, that's, that explains so much of life right there. He just, he just loves it. And there's no reason why. No one will ever understand why. He loves that skateboard. So later on that day, I was walking from 69th in New York to Columbus and 81st. And as I was getting up to Columbus on 81st, I saw a bulldog no. and a woman, same day, a woman carrying his skateboard. Was it the same bulldog? No. And did you take a picture yes. of it? Yes. And did you send it to your wife? No. Okay. I thought maybe you'd share it. I know she likes funny pet videos, I told the too. story. The picture wasn't great. <laughs> a little blurry. Yeah, but it was amazing. So I just have to go back to the fact that you like funny pet videos. Do you find comfort in them, humor? What is it? I don't, uh, I don't really have a pet. I don't I know. You we, do have a pet. I'm you not, have Javier. It's, I'm, I'm not, it's not, he and I have no real relationship. Wait, that's, your wife is going to take real offense to this. No, it's her thing. You don't like cats? They're okay. <laughs> but Javier is marrying my sister's cat. That's fine. You're not going to be at the wedding? I guess I will. <laughs> you don't really like a cat. I, I like that my wife enjoys it. Okay. And when he gets lost, I go looking for him. Well, that, Javier does not go outside on the streets of New York, does he? No, but... Out, we have a house in Long okay. Island, and sometimes he will escape. Okay, well, that's nice. So you yeah. do secretly love the cat? Okay, secretly. Okay, I thought Let's so. Let's keep it a secret. All right, don't tell anybody. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Ah!
like they are walking strong. Elegant and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on Today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! You want bread? Three dollars! No soup for you! How would I describe the soup Nazi? Is I just thought he was a very militant food vendor who, who didn't take crap from anybody and uh, ruled his his soup station with an iron fist. And I, I even went into the original audition in an army uniform with a beret. So I looked like uh, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> You're pushing your luck, little man. Sheila! Hey! Uh-oh. What is this? You're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line! My favorite line is the kissing line, and uh, I was doing a, a thing for Sony once called the Seinfeld Food Truck, where we were going to different locations, and for two hours people would line up and get treats. And uh, I very seldom get the chance to say that line, and there was one couple in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who were brave enough to stand there and start making out in front of me, and I finally got to say, like, you're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line! main thing is to keep the line moving. I say, you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So, right. The step to the left part, it, it's, it's been made fun of so often. I've had people come up to me and like stand like that and step to the left. And uh, going to the actual real soup stand, I finally found out that the reason you step to the left is the menu board is to your right. So if you order and stay there, no one else could see the menu. So there actually is method to the madness. I actually say no soup for you a lot these days, but uh, in the first like three years after the episode, I refused to say it. I wouldn't say it for anybody. I, uh, when I was nominated for the Emmy, I had interviews with a, a few big TV shows and I refused to say it for them because I just thought I'd sound like a bad water cooler impression of myself out of context. And then when we shot the finale, um, the very first scene we shot was actually a silent scene at this bed and breakfast where I take Poppy's soup bowl away from him because he motions that he wants salt and pepper. <laughs> and uh, Jerry and Larry David decided that I should say no soup for you out loud, even though you weren't going to hear it in the show, which absolutely terrorized me but I said it and as we walked away from that scene Larry David walked over to me and he goes hey man you say it the same way you said it three years ago so ever since then it's like a knee jerk there was um, a lady named Marcia who was in the extra pool and they had built the soup stand a little longer than they planned so for me to go to the cash register and back to serve the soup was killing the timing of the lines. It was just taking too long. So they called this girl out from the extra pool because she looked like she would be working in, in my stand. And uh, her name was Marcia. And she, at a moment's notice, did that thing where she pulls the bag away from George and hands him the money back. It actually got 
uh, more laughs than anything I did. And to this day, when I see that scene over and over again, I laugh at her timing. The guy who runs the place is a little temperamental, especially about the ordering procedure. He secretly referred to as the soup Nazi. Working with that cast was just amazing. Jason Alexander was calling me Lat, which is the New York shortening of Larry. There's Lawrence, Larry, Lat, but that's New York. And he was calling me that within about an hour of me being on the set. Um, Julia was incredible because if I made her laugh, she would totally break up and she'd grab my hand and go, you're so funny. So they were so welcoming. But the most amazing story to me is Jerry himself because um, I've dealt with a lot of producers and directors in the world of theater, TV, film, everything. I've done some directing myself and I know what that's like. But I've never worked with um, a, a director and producer who had less ego than Jerry Seinfeld. Medium crab bisque. When I did the callback, I did the six scenes that the Soup Nazi has, and he laughed a lot. It was great. It was, he was laughing too much, actually. And then he had me do it again, and he said, you know, I don't understand why the character is so mean. Could you, you know, kind of do it again and give it some of this, be a little nicer sometimes, which I did horribly. I don't think he laughed once. And I thought for sure that was, you know, the death nail about the character. I wasn't going to get it. But I did get it. And as soon as I walked onto the soundstage, Jerry B. lined over to me and he said, you know what, man, forget about the direction I gave you. Just do what you did when you walked in. The meaner, the funnier, I guess. And I was just astounded by his lack of wanting to be right, which almost every other director and producer uh, has. I could go a long time without being recognized, but every once in a while, somebody will say to me, you know, has anybody ever told you you look like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld? And depending on if I have time to talk about it, you know, because sometimes I, like I'm in a rush or something, so I'll just say like, yeah, I get that a lot. And other times, you know, I, I get to go like, yeah, I was him. You know, and it's, it's always fun because Seinfeld fans uh, range from 13 years old to, to 83 years old, you know. A couple of times I've been somewhere, like on the subway or somewhere where it's crowded and people can't really see me. And I will actually hear somebody say to somebody else, you know, no soup for you. And I'm, I'm actually like, you know, 10 people away and they don't even know that I'm there, but I hear people say it. I actually wrote a book called Confessions of a Soup Nazi, an adventure in acting and cooking, uh, which is part cookbook, part memoirs of, you know, 30, 40 years of being an actor. But the reason I wrote it is because I get so many people that come up to me and they go, you know, you were so great on Seinfeld. Did you ever do any other acting after that? So, uh, I, but I get all kinds of stuff. I get people that, that think I'm really Al Yegane and that's, you know, I, I was at your soup stand. I visited New York and I was at your soup stand and, you know, it was closed. When do you plan on reopening? And I have so much fun with going like, I'm, I'm an actor. It's not my soup stand. It's, you know. The funniest thing about how my life has changed after Seinfeld is I had no idea that the life I had was gone forever. Not a moment goes by in my life where it doesn't have something to do with having been the soup Nazi. Really, an hour goes by and something happens where that takes over my life again. So it's, it's a whole new existence. Where do I think the soup Nazi would be now? Well, then I have to pitch my idea for a spinoff because, see, I, I see a food court in Manhattan where the soup Nazi, Babu, and Poppy are all in a row with their prospective little stands and Jackie Childs comes in there every day for lunch and we vie for his business, of course. You know, whatever the storylines are about uh, or whatever actually the events that happen in every episode, it really boils down to the way people treat each other. You know, they didn't treat people very well. You got to admit that. I know people loved, you know, Jerry, George, Elaine and Kramer, but they were horrible. They treated people badly, and they always got their comeuppance for treating people badly. So I guess in the end, that's such a generational and universal, never-ending 
idea is you treat people a certain way and you get back the way, you know, it's like the golden rule, you know, you get back what you give. And that's really what the show is about in the end. Hello there to all of you watching Today All Day. I'm Joe Fryer filling in for Carson for today's Pop Star Plus. We have a great show for you, including WWE superstar Roman Reigns' visit to the third hour ahead of SummerSlam. Plus, our conversation with the cast of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. They're celebrating 12 Emmy nominations this year. And to close out the show, we're diving into the beloved film Practical Magic with its star Sandra Bullock. A glimpse at the leading lady from the 90s you have to see. But first, here's today's pop start with Chanel. All right, first up, Jeopardy. It's an announcement audiences have been waiting for nearly two years to hear what is a permanent new host, or actually two. Well, according to Deadline, the iconic game show plans to continue splitting hosting duties between Maya Bialik and Ken Jennings into the next season. Jeopardy is reportedly in talks to extend the two host format with the current lineup in two long term deals, and production has been teasing this one for a while. So just last month, executive producer Michael Davis told Variety the show was going to need, quote, multiple hosts for the franchise's expanded future plans. Okay, interesting. Well, I mess with the I'm looking at you like you might have some insights. I have no insight. I was going to say. Someone who once hosted. Yeah, yeah some say maybe the best host ever. Oh, yeah. stop. Some say. <laughs> 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 is it, is it, <laughs> says that. Is it harder than most people think? Doing it is very yeah. hard. It's yeah. a challenging job. It moves so fast. Right. Well, it's not go. about that you have to know the answers because those are written down. Right. It's just more you got to keep it moving. And you don't want to mess up the game. No, true. Because then you've ruined the contestants. Especially the fans. Like, they're all about it. Oh, they fans are, they have opinions. Okay. All right. I was not their choice. <laughs> Next up, Britney Spears and Sir Elton John. The two music giants are reportedly teaming up on a new project. How does a remake of Tiny Dancer sound? Wow. According to People Magazine, a source confirmed Britney and Elton are recording a duet of the 1972 classic, and the track could be released as early as next month. This would mark Britney's first new music since 2016, and her big return to the recording studio after the end of her 13 long year long conservatorship. Fans online, as you can imagine, Imagine yesterday blew up Twitter with excitement. One sharing this gif and writing, This is perfect. Britney is literally a tiny dancer. <laughs> Another adding, And suddenly the world was at peace again. <laughs> but of course, with all the excitement come the many internet sleuth theories. So a lot of folks pointing to a now deleted video of Brit hanging out with Rocker, Rocket Man actor Taryn Edgerton as a sign that she might have been recording with Elton this past weekend. He mm. lives close by. Neither Britney or Elton have confirmed the news yet. So you'll just have to keep it here to today and we'll keep you posted. All right, next up, Adele. Rumor has it, do you get it? <laughs> I got okay. it. Okay. There's a good reason for fans to celebrate this morning. The Grammy winner is finally headed to Vegas. You might recall Adele abruptly canceled her residency in Vegas back in January, just one day before it was scheduled to kick off, citing COVID as a reason for production delays. But now she says they figured out the logistics and she's ready to rock. Yesterday, she announced the rescheduled Caesars Palace shows titled Weekends with Adele will run from November to March. Online, the singer thanked her fans for their patience, writing in a post, I'm going to give you the absolute best of me. It's nice to say. Mm -hmm. Tickets will go on sale next month. Adele's website says fans who had tickets for the original shows will get priority when that opens up. So that's fair. All right, next up, a league of their own. There's no crying in baseball, but there is cheering in Studio 1A because we have an exclusive sneak peek at the new full-length trailer for Prime Video's upcoming series, nearly three decades in the making. So let me set it up. It's based on Penny Marshall's 1992 hit movie. It will feature real-life events from the 1940s in and outside of the famous All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. All right, here's a look. We're here for the tryouts. I don't think you understand. This is the All-American League. We're pretty All-American. Who was that? Show that knuckleball. They didn't even let me try out, Dad. Maxine, you've got to make some smarter choices. This is fine. This is something I can work with. Each as I like to go through a few rules. Curfew is at 10 p.m. sharp. No smoking or drinking. No pants. What? <laughs> you want the game to be more exciting? Shorten the skirts. Yeah. 
the hell are you doing? I thought that you would catch it. My back turn? This is our one. Okay, yes. there you go. It's going to be good rounding out that all star lineup. The ensemble cast is led by Abby Jacobson, Nick Offerman, and Shante Adams. A League of Their Own premieres Friday, August mm -hmm. 12th on Prime Video. All right, and finally, Lady Gaga. Fans are saying the pop superstar. Okay, work with me here. Has an invisible shield protecting her after this video from a recent concert went viral. You want to see it? Yeah. All right, so watch as Gaga's performing. Something appears to fly towards the stage. You see it there? Then bam. Whoa. The dark object just stops unexpectedly Let's and falls to the Let's ground. Again. Yeah. Look, it stops there. It's like an iPad. And Gaga, yeah. Gaga doesn't lose her poker face for a second. Well, can we see it again? Did it's you see that? Gravity. But Wait, why did it stop it, right like, in that moment? It seemed moment. like an abrupt stop. Right? Like, okay. it looks like it hit her shield. It, 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 an invisible <laughs> well, shield. That's, that's what, what I was going to say. That's what the fans say. <laughs> like you said, fans know everything, right? I see what you mean, because it didn't, but it like, stopped. fully fall. Right. right. It hit something the fans were like, back. it went like this and then dropped. I like, I like Savannah. It's gravity. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when I look yeah. closer now, I get it. It's an yeah. invisible shield. That's yeah. what the fans say. If the fans say she has a shield, knows. then she does. And there's more to know today after all this is Pop Star Plus. First up, Joseph Quinn. Did you know this Stranger Things actor is British? Yeah, Quinn, who has become an online sensation since his character Eddie Munson joined the Hawkins gang this season, he stopped by The Tonight Show and shocked Jimmy Fallon with his accent. So Jimmy decided to put him to the test and challenge Joseph to read an Eddie monologue in voices from around the world. We're, we're the freaks because we like to play a fantasy game. <laughs> yeah, that's a double, oh, a double yeah. point for that. All right. Okay. Liverpool. Liverpool. Okay. Bo. Bo, as long as you're into bands <laughs> or science or parties. That's pretty good, Bo. My, my mom's from Liverpool and she sounds exactly like that. Oh, uh, New York. New York. New York. Oh! It's Fox Conformity! Oh! Dear Duffer Brothers, we're going to join the campaign to bring Eddie back for season five. All right, and finally, Andy Cohen, the TV host and father of two, is adding singer to his resume. Yesterday, Cohen posted a video showing off his pipes for an audience of, well, his 12-week-old daughter, Lucy. And in typical Andy Cohen fashion, it's not your average lullaby. Look out, look out, the candy man. Here he comes and he's gone again. Little lady ain't got no friends to run. Candy man comes around again. Who knew babies love Grateful Dead? Yeah, Lucy's face there says it all. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Still to come, Roman Reigns tells us what could be in store at WWE SummerSlam. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Roman Reigns is the WWE's undisputed Universal Champion, and he's set to take on fellow WWE star and my fellow Minnesotan Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2022. Last year's event drew record-breaking viewership, and Roman told our third hour all about this year's hype. WWE superstar has won multiple championships in the ring and outside of the ring he has beat cancer twice oh, yeah. this weekend we're going to see him in fight mode as he faces off against Brock Lesnar at the WWE Super Slam good morning welcome back Ooh, Roman hi good morning guys thanks for having me yes. it's so great to see you so I'm pretty sure at WrestleMania 38 you beat Brock Lesnar and now you're going to go back to Nashville you're going to face off against him again at Super Slam how you feeling uh, SummerSlam, season. SummerSlam. There we go. I, I feel great. You know, uh, I'm on a course now to do something that no one's ever done: dominate Brock Lesnar. So, <laughs> you know, and we're really entering that that kind of time frame in my career where I'm really pushing myself to a different level and, and just trying to achieve things that have never been done before. And anytime you can beat Brock Lesnar, you know, three times in a row. That's a pretty, good, pretty uh, good. That's a feather in the cap. It's crazy. Yeah. I was just about to ask you about that because fans recognize that it could be the last time that we see this pairing. And people want to know or they're wondering what they can expect from you. I hope it's the last time. It hurts. It's brutal. <laughs> That's being the thing. I think I would he, He's a big old country boy, and he's got uh, such a great legitimate background. I mean, he started out as an amateur wrestler right. um, all the way through the collegiate ranks into the UFC, as everybody knows, heavyweight champion. He's dominated WWE for a long time. Uh, the only problem he has is that Roman Reigns showed up and took <laughs> over. So awesome. it's, uh, it's going to be great. That's good. You, your work does not stop when you get home. Mm. You have five little uh, ones, yeah. two sets. One set of twins. I can't even imagine. Gotcha. Two yeah. sets. Two <laughs> sets of twins. So oh what is your daily life like? Well, it's it's loud, it's hectic. Um, you know, it's one of those things when you have that many kids, you really have to have a schedule and just try to get everything in line and mm -hmm. you're just kind of knocking it, almost treating it like a business because there's just so many of yeah. them. Um, and you have to try to delegate and give them all as much attention as possible. Uh, so it's been great, you know, my, my schedule shifted around a little bit so I have a lot more time at home now and I can feel that relationship strengthening yeah. and those bonds are getting better and better. So it's uh, it's a very blessed situation. But he did did say in the break he does have date nights to get away with That's his wife. Guess. Manicures and pedicures. Got to. Admittedly. <laughs> date nights, date lunches. You have to be creative when you have a lot of kids and you have to continue to put the work in your relationship. Yeah, no, so that's right. very important. Do you right. see uh, the wrestling bug in your kids? I mean, it's a big part of my family. You know, my father, my uncle, yeah. um, you know, and their mentor, uh, you know, uh, High Chief Peter Maivia, who's Dwayne uh, Johnson, The Rock's uh, grandfather. Uh, so it, it has been, you know, something that's been involved in our family for a very long time. So I would not be surprised at all. Do you have rules? Like, I remember... <laughs> We used to, because we used to watch like WWE and SmackDown and all. We had, my friend of mine had a balcony and then a couch, like a, like a two tiered place. And we would jump off of her balcony and then jump onto the couch and like do wrestling moves. I mean, it was dangerous, I think, back now. And there was nobody to tell us no. Like, right. you know, you're Well, I'm here now that. to tell you out there. We're going to take this opportunity and we're going to tell you no. Don't do that. Right? I know. Leave it up to us. I Let us it. entertain tell you. Me. Speak, don't break your bones on Don't the break your bones. And I never did somehow. Really quickly, there's your video game character. How cool is that? It's awesome, yeah. It's he um, just like you. Well, they're doing a great job nowadays. 2K's Look done at unbelievable. This. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to, to really, you know, plug it in and make Ooh. it the realism and then also just the playability. You know, it, they, they made it a lot easier to uh, have fun with this game. So they've done a great job. Roman, it's so great to see you. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. You can watch SummerSlam on Saturday, July 30th at 8 o'clock Eastern on Peacock, part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Up next, a visit with Tony Shalhoub and his fellow marvelous Mrs. Maisel co-stars. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Jackson now 
Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. We love catching up with the stars of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It racked up, count them, 12 Emmy nominations this year, including one for Tony Shalhoub in his role as Abe Weissman. He and the rest of the cast, who play parents on the show, spoke to us about what they love the most about their characters. It's been a, a, a big, big transitional period for Abe. He's let go of his conventional life and stable career. This season really develops his whole period of kind of reinventing himself on the positive side. In a way, it brings him closer, I think, to Midge because her life is, uh, you know, she's gotten bounced off the, the tour and she's forced to start over too. So. In a way, there's a, there's an intersection of, of, their, of their paths. Rose's journeys have been so thrilling and so um, surprising to me as an actor. So as we know, she started this show with this judgment about what was happening with her child and definitely felt like she understood or thought she understood exactly how the, the world was supposed to work. And I love how all of that, you know, it was combusted and completely turned upside down by what happened with this divorce. So I think what's great about season four is we're going to see everything that she trusted at one point is gone and she's got a new or a job. And so we see a businesswoman really coming into, in, into her own, which, by the way, is not unlike her child. So Apple, like... Apple never really seemed to fall that far from tree, but now like the tree is like being taken care of by the apple. So that's kind of beautiful. What can we expect from Shirley in season four is more Shirley. Shirley, Shirley is always Shirley. Um, her driving passion is her family. She is concerned that her son is single. Um, she wants everybody to be settled and happy and well-fed. And she is going to go to the ends of the earth to make sure that that's true. I think uh, that Moish will forever be rooting for Midge and Joel to get back together while magically maintaining relationships with each, but perhaps that's part of his uh, not so evil plan to get them back together by being involved in both of their lives. I think that's Moish's plan for season four. Probably not your cup of tea, though, right, eh? Bye bye, Birdie. I know nothing about the show, Moish. Yes, but I know you. And I know you wouldn't like Bye Bye Birdie because Bye Bye Birdie is entertaining. I know nothing about the show. They have a very complicated relationship, these two. They're, they're, uh, they are very different. On the other hand, they're kind of more similar in some ways than they would even want to ever want to admit. They're tied together. Their family, they're, even though their children are separated and, and divorced, they share grandchildren. And they're forever, they're forever, you know, bonded um, for good or for ill. Um, yeah, and Amy I and think, Dan found a great balance also of the oil and water nature of the Weissmans and, and the Maisels as the, the patriarchs and matriarchs. Well, I have to say, I'm, I'm like madly in love with Caroline. So when we work together, it's hard to be at odds. 
It's always been weird for me to be an actor that has to have tension with somebody that I love so, so much, but it's also so much fun because there's so much trust. So that when we had that scene running out, you know, where I ran out of her house and just screamed and yelled in the neighborhood, that was one of my most fun moments of working. No, so fun. Shut up! You shut up! You shut up! Both of you shut Shirley! Up. Oh God, Rose, you scared me. What's the matter with you? We have neighbors, and right now they are all looking at you like you're insane, and therefore they're looking at me like I'm insane because I live here with you in this house. I think one of the most enjoyable and challenging aspects of working on the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is the style. Uh, of the eight-page wonder, as uh, it's called. That is to say that there's an eight-page scene that's normally cut up into anywhere from 20 to 40 pieces of coverage. Hey! Oh my what God. What is it? It's your car is blocking mine. My car? Get up, you gotta move it. What time is it? It's four after five. Four after five in the morning. And I'm late. Come on, get a move on. Oh, my leg is asleep. You both wear pajamas? What are your girlfriends? Well, my slippers. Cheryl and me, we sleep in the buff. It's healthier, freer, warmer, too. Where did I put my robe? Skin on skin as God intended. Come on! Chop, chop! Oh, yeah. You know, as an actor, to be challenged by that is not something I'd experienced before. But this style of acting is not something I uh, was was uh, prepared for and have absolutely loved to learn how to do. Rose, <laughs> it's laundry day. A bop, laundry day. It's five in the morning. Her purity, her authenticity, her lack of shame. It's something that is so freeing. Marin and I talk about this a lot, that these characters give us a chance to exercise freedoms that we don't necessarily personally possess. Um, Marin has talked to me a lot about Rose's confidence that she is trying to access inside of herself. And I feel the same way about Shirley. Shirley has no shame. She is all embracing, she's all heart, and she's completely authentic. There is no filter between what she thinks and what she says, which I love. Moish. Could you come down here, please? Sure, Shirley, this is completely unnecessary. Marsha! Shirley! Someone's in trouble. Shut up, Alan! Moishy! Yeah! Can you come down here, please? Shirley, I assure you. Moish! I'm not wearing pants! I need to ask you something. You can't ask me from there? No. Do I need to put on pants? Yes! All right. I delight in, in playing this character. Uh, I'm a father myself uh, of two daughters that are uh, similar age to Midge. And there's a, a lot of overlap there. Uh, it's, I guess, the best, the most fun for, for me is, is when we, we do these large group scenes, uh, the family, both families together, uh, try, you know, hammering out their, their issues. We're a cast that's very tightly knit and we, we all delight in playing off of each other. It's forever challenging, but it's super rewarding. The same tradition of our, the show's creators, writers, directors, Amy and Dan Palladino, to expand the universe, to drive Midge's character forward in her ambitious attempts to gain control of her own career and life on her terms. Um, all the relationships expanding, new characters introduced. That tradition, season after season, will continue. And if you like that sort of thing and you can lower your expectations, you're up for a great ride. <laughs> Always great to hear from that accomplished cast. You can catch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Prime Video. Still to come, a little practical magic with the one and only Sandra Bullock. Travel back to the 90s with us next. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We are back. Sandra Bullock is one of Hollywood's most beloved stars, and today she's celebrating a birthday. So in her honor, we're going to take a fun trip down memory lane, flashing back to 1998 when she told today about her bewitching role in Practical Magic. Sandra Bullock, good morning. Welcome morning. back. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. All right, how does one describe this this movie? That's uh, a good question. You want to hear how I describe it? <laughs> yeah, okay, it? please. Okay, a romantic comedy <laughs> with a little Stephen King and Thelma and Louise thrown in for good measure. I'll, I'll live with that. That's, a, that's good. That's you really think? good. You get a good job. Okay, you're done. Thanks very uh, much, Amber. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. What do you, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, as is, is, is odd as that sounds, that's essentially what the book was. And so instead of us saying, let's try and find one tone that'll sort of generalize things, it, it we just wanted to be experimental and stay true to the fact that there were several different feelings, which, you know, pisses some people off and is confusing. Can you say that on well, a ticks would be okay. preferable, but we Upsets, can live with that. You know, it, it, it's a, because we're used to having just one tone, and I think the fact that this has several tones um, sets people back a little bit. But once you get into it, you go, okay, a little something for everybody. Because which, it really does kind of dip into very yeah. light, funny moments, and then very dark, yeah, scary yeah. moments. But you're like, whoa, wait well, a I minute. Think the scary side makes the funnier parts funnier, and I think the funnier parts makes you, when you get to, you need the relief on either side, I think, and that's what I liked so much about it, was it just when you think you know what you're getting, you don't, kind of like the witches, you think you're getting one side, but you know. You yeah, it, you it, and you guys are, the two sisters yeah. are you and Nicole Kidman, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you play Sally, she mm -hmm. plays Jillian, Jillian, and you're sort of a yin and yang type uh, yeah, sister it's, act, right? it's sort of like what happened to my sister and myself. There are no genes that were replicated. <laughs> they just sort of split and we went our separate ways, which is incredibly healthy once you get older and you really learn to love and appreciate what makes them different and you know that if you were the same, you'd kill each other. Um, and that's what I liked about this was that, that Jillian and myself, Nicole and myself, were so completely different in real life as we are in the, in the film that you just... You see other ways of looking at things because we get so comfortable in how we do things all the time that to have someone who's completely opposite show you, well, why don't you try it this way, is such a relief. I can't even tell you. Did you like working with Nicole I had Kidman? such a great time. I had you such a really great time. You guys really hit it off, didn't you? We did. And the fact is, is that we don't have anything in common except for at the dinner table with a bottle of wine. And everything sort of blends together. Speaking of the dinner table with yeah. a bottle of wine, yeah. you had a bottle of tequila, tequila. at yeah. the dinner table in one scene. Yeah. And, and the, uh, a producer on the Today Show, Peter Johansson, and I went to see it. and we said, this looks like such a fun well, scene. This is sort of the big chill dancing for the 90s, right? No, it's, it's, it's what it's supposed to, I mean, that, yes, that's what we would hoped it would be, but um, we weren't drunk when we shot these parts or when we did our close-ups, but then we had to reshoot a scene where it was far away and it was on our backs, and Nicole just put the bottle on the table and she says, you know what, there's no reason we shouldn't be drunk here. And I said, you know what, that's true. So we got a little... Was that as fun as it looked, though? Yeah, Even the scenes when you weren't drinking tequila, it was so fun just it, to watch you guys let loose what and was go crazy. What was the most fun watching Diane and Stockard? You know, because you think you're being well, and you turn around, they're like, their shirts are practically... Not literally, but it, it's just such, it was just such freedom. Then, of course, Griffin would run in in the scene and dance around the table. Oh, the feeling Griffin Dunn, who's the director. The director yeah. And I, we should mention Diane Wiest and Stockard, Stockard Channing, Channing play yeah. the aunts. The aunts, and Aidan Quinn plays um, the, the handsome... Cop. I think he yeah. has pretty blue it's not, eyes. It doesn't hurt to have that, I realized. Yeah, so although in, your, in this case, he has one green eye and one, one blue, blue eye, right? Eye. Because blue Sally, eye. when she's a little girl, makes, makes a, the wish that that's the guy she wants, but she makes a list that possibly couldn't exist. We haven't really still described what, what, what happens in this movie. Should we do that a little bit to give sure. people an idea what sure, they're going into? Sure, but you're so good into? at the first, you know, <laughs> list, so why don't you continue? No, go just, ahead, you do it. Oh, darn it. Just a little <laughs> bit. Just give us a quick synopsis of the plot. Well, essentially, it's it's the the plot is here, here to, you know, two women that have experienced or seen how love is so painful to their mother and their mother uh, basically died of a broken heart because all the Owens women are doomed to have their true love die. If, and so you basically run around with a curse knowing that if you love somebody, they really love you, they're going to die. 
which is, is we, I know when I really find that happiness, I go, oh my God, what's going to happen to them? You know, it's, I think that's the same thing with ha ha having children, that she, my character limits herself from ever feeling that again, and Nicole's character goes off and experiences it to excess. You right, know? she's sort just like a wild herself. biker oh, yeah, chick, exactly. crazy, insane girl. Yeah, exactly, and finds the one guy that's essentially not great for her, but she doesn't feel like he's going to die. And so it's, it's those fears that we all live through. And also the fact is, do, are we ever going to find that amazing person that's right for us? Would you call this a chick flick? You know what? Yeah, I would. I would. And it's, it's, it's got, it's, it doesn't eliminate anything for the guys, but it definitely, the women come out of a feeling, and that's what I loved about it, is that I didn't want to have a film where I'm killing the other girl for her man, or stealing her husband, or, or not supporting those people that I really love that happen to be female. Well, we're spellbound over you, Sandra. Happy birthday. There you go, folks. Another Pop Star Plus for you. Join us again tomorrow. Until then, bye. Hi, hi, hi. Today All Day is here. This is our digital show. It's called Today in 30. It's our half hour wrap up of everything from our show this morning. And we're going to start with the nation's economy. All eyes on the Fed's key meetings getting underway today to try to control uh, record inflation. Tom Costello is right there. He'll have a lot more coming up. Then we're going to bring you a story about adorable panda bears. <laughs> but this has a high tech twist. Your first look at facial recognition technology that's being developed to protect them in the wild. Look at that. Also, Ed, we're so excited to introduce you to this remarkable teenager, a 16-year-old. He just spent 28 days sailing across the Atlantic by himself. He joined us for an exclusive interview to talk about his incredible feat. All that plus today contributor Alejandro Ramos is here with some great tips to help you pick the perfect produce at the farmer's market. So let's get to it. Coming up on Today, today in 30. 30. NBC's Tom Costello is at the Fed headquarters in D.C., back on Fed Watch, and he's outside the Federal Reserve in Washington with the latest. Hey, Tom, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning to you. So the Fed has made it very clear it intends to keep raising interest rates to get inflation under control. It's walking a real tightrope here. It needs to slow the economy without pushing it over a cliff. We're going to find out this week whether despite 50-year unemployment lows, the economy is already right on the edge. Mid-July and the economic heat is on. The key question, has the economy already slid into recession, shrinking two quarters in a row? President Biden remains optimistic. God willing, I don't think we're going to see a recession. The fear the Federal Reserve could push the economy into recession, as it's expected to again raise interest rates another three quarters of a percentage point on Wednesday to curb 40-year high inflation. The latest inflation report showed no sign of relief, up 9.1% in June. Americans are paying more for rent, food, clothing, and fuel, though gas prices have dropped 68 cents in a month. They're still $1.17 more than a year ago. Instead of maybe just running to the supermarket like two and three times per week, I'm more conscious about trying to get everything in one trip. The Fed chairman has insisted the price hikes are not sustainable. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down. Late Monday, more evidence of the inflation effect, as retail giant Walmart said Americans are changing what they buy. More groceries, fewer big-ticket items. A recent survey found 58% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. For some, it's impossible to make ends meet. Food banks are reporting a surge of people in need. From California. Diapers are so expensive now, and um, I recently just had twins. To Virginia. Their rents are up. Their transportation costs are up. They have to fill their tanks to get to work. And the thing that's giving is that food budget. Underscoring the Fed's challenge. How much pressure is the Fed under right now to get this economy back to an even keel? They need to get it right this time, and the, the, the danger here is they really get it wrong a second time after uh, uh, providing too much stimulus to the economy. Now they're going to take it away too quickly and perhaps create a recession. Yeah, we've said all along that when you, when you hike interest rates, of course, you could see credit cards get more expensive, 
car loans, new loans, and also mortgages are influenced by what the Fed does. So a lot riding on these higher rates. Hold it back to you. But Tom, then you go to what President Biden said yesterday, and he said he does not expect a recession. So what's driving that optimism? I got to say, he's not the only one. Economists are divided because this is a head scratcher of an economy. Never before has the Fed been in an environment where it's trying to fight inflation despite very low unemployment. Wages keep going up. Consumers still spend. In addition, we're coming out of a pandemic with massive amounts of stimulus money to keep the economy from going into a depression. So this is a very, very unusual uh, predicament for the Fed right now. And whether we're in a recession or not may not be defined by simply two quarters of contracting GDP. All right, Tom Costello for us there at the Fed in D.C. Tom, thanks. This morning, a high-tech new way of protecting pandas. And here to bring it to us, NBC's Janice Mackey Frere. Janice, we were just, we're so excited to see you. <laughs> pandas are too, but you're our Beijing correspondent. We have not seen you since yeah. the pandemic. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's fantastic to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having you. me. And everybody loves panda bears. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and now facial recognition is being used to track these adorable creatures, both in captivity and in the wild. And we recently visited the Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding. It's in Southwest China to see how it works. Giant pandas are revered around the world, and most of them live here in China. About 1,800 are in the wild, and more than 600 in captivity, where they have a rock star sort of popularity. It's very cute and lovely. They look adorable, and pretty much everything they do is cute. There's a mother and baby here. But to the human eye, telling those furry faces apart, well, it's not so black and white. To know which panda might be Bebe, or Aichio, or Baoli. Is this the same panda? No. Nope, a different one? Same. Different one, yeah. Uh -huh. And so researchers at the Chengdu Panda Base are looking deeper, developing facial recognition technology for pandas. Chan Peng is the researcher behind a growing database of panda images and videos that computers analyze to detect slight differences in how they look. Their mouth, nose, markings and ears, he says. We can distinguish their features through deep learning. Being able to recognize each bear can help with conservation, experts say, because they can know panda populations better, their habitats, health, and how they live. In the wild, where two-thirds of the world's giant pandas roam, hundreds of remote and infrared cameras can also watch for threats. Using artificial intelligence for pandas is different from AI that's used on humans, and nowhere more than here in China, because pandas are covered in fur and don't really have facial expressions beyond this, or this, or this. The pandas are most active in the morning before it gets too hot. Then they just want to go inside and sleep. Getting a panda's portrait isn't easy. It can take hours for photographers to get usable images, including of pandas living at zoos in the U.S. Soon, panda fans here will be able to use their phones to scan their favorite faces and get details about who's who. They have lovely ears and little feet, she says. While giant pandas are no longer classed as endangered, they are still vulnerable. AI could ensure they're better protected, or at least never called by the wrong name. <laughs> Cute. So sweet. Wow, wow, incredible that they're able to use this technology, because honestly, they do look yeah. all the same to me. Yeah. Well, but the app is going to be able to help people visiting uh, zoos and the panda research base to be able to identify who their favorite is. Like, oh, that's doo-doo. Or, <laughs> yeah. It, well, we're so awesome. happy you're here in the studio. Every time we look at you, we remember the moment where you hadn't seen your son because you were working covering COVID in China for 49 days. It was this oh. moment. No. And oh. not only is this moment poignant because we loved seeing it, Oh. Uh, but also because today it's his ninth birthday. It's his ninth oh. birthday. Oh.
What's his name? His name is Jet, oh. Jet. and he's uh, he's in Canada right yeah. now visiting his grandma, oh. who he hasn't oh. seen since the, the beginning of the pandemic. Wow. So, well, it's gonna yeah. happy, happy birthday, We're Jet. Happy. Thank yes. you. <laughs> What's it like being here right now? Yeah. It's very strange. Um, you know, we live in China. They have the zero COVID policy, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of rules and a lot of restrictions. Um, on the flight to Vancouver, mm -hmm. the flight crew was in the full white suits with the wow. goggles and kept them on for 12 hours. So the, it's it's very strange to go from a place where the restrictions are taken to mm -hmm. an extreme. Mm -hmm. You know, into a world right here. They're like, here it is. A little yeah. bit from COVID. We're there. hugging and yeah. 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 She's probably like, yeah. too soon, too soon. Yeah. Exactly. Six feet, please. Yeah. Yeah. We can't keep six yeah. feet from you. Yeah. We're yeah. delighted to have you this here. This is a thanks, thrill. Thank you. Thank you. Should we do a little boost, guys? Yeah. Let's hit it. All right. It's pretty common for teenagers to be completely embarrassed when their parents do something for no apparent reason. But there is a teenager who deserves our sympathy for her dad's actions. Take a look at the scene from a California restaurant. My daughter thinks that you are so cute. Oh, stop! <laughs> What's your... Oh, my God. 15-year-old oh Sophie God, love slid under the table after that comment. Turns out Sophie's brother was the one who gave the dad the idea. Yeah, now after look at the brother. He's the brother innocent. He's no. Trying, you know, he was like, what? Oh. So the dad heard Sophie whisper it, and then the, then the, the son told the dad. Anyway, Sophie now says she's on the high alert around her brother. She can't say anything. She can't. Oh, my God. I love that dad. That's such a dad move. It's so good. I, would do. I just love her. Oh, my God. She's like, what? could I please just disappear right now? Could I just go away? Okay. I love that. Will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. We've got a story this morning of an adventurous 16 year old. He just sailed across the Atlantic Ocean all by himself. Crazy. You know what the wildest part is, though? Cal Courier says he only started taking sailing lessons this year in January. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to talk to him exclusively, but first, let's have a little bit more of his amazing journey. 16 year old Cal Courier has been on an Excellent adventure, completing a solo journey across the Atlantic Ocean in a sailboat. Oh, my gosh. Have fun, babe. Courier beginning the trip in Marion, Massachusetts last month. I'll miss all of you. I'll miss any human. Departing on his 30-foot sailboat, the Argo. And after about 28 days alone at sea, the California teen finally reuniting with his parents in Lagos, Portugal. From start to finish, Courier ultimately traveling nearly 4,000 miles across the Atlantic. So we're heading north um, to the east of Cape Cod. While Courier grew up around boats, he only started taking sailing lessons seriously this January. But a love for the sea runs in his family. Both Courier's father and grandfather are transatlantic sailors. The teen saying they both inspired him to make the trip across the world's second largest ocean. Time is short. Life is awesome, so do awesome things right now. 
So in a sailboat he bought for $12,000 from 90-year-old Sandy Van Zandt. And there's this stuff that Sandy's brought over. It from just, the 50s? From the 50s. <laughs> he crossed the Atlantic alone. Now, Courier is likely the youngest person to ever sail solo across the Atlantic from west to east. I want to show other kids that they aren't too young to do amazing things. Just think it up. Ask for help. Make it happen. And he's doing just that, reaching this ambitious goal all before starting his junior year of high school. Wow. And Cal Courier, he joins us now live from Lagos in Portugal. Cal, before we get to everything that happened and how you're feeling, we want to know, first of all, how your parents told you it was okay <laughs> for you to do this when you just started taking lessons in January. So um, first off, my dad is um, very adventurous and my mom is also um, quite adventurous and and um, the whole brainstorming process for what I was going to do this summer happened mm. with my dad. Um, so he was kind of there for me deciding I was going to do it. Um, and my mom took a little bit more convincing, but um, <laughs> after a couple long conversations and a couple long nights, uh, we convinced her that it was safe to do. Well, Cal, what was it like? Because an Atlantic crossing is yeah. not easy sailing mm -hmm. or smooth sailing, is it? Um, so regularly, the safest way is from uh, east to west. Um, there's nicer winds and less storms that way. Um, I went um, west to east, partly because I was already on the east coast and partly out of um, some level of ignorance. Um, it, in, in this certain um, crossing, I was extremely lucky with the wind um, and with the weather. So I only actually had one rainy night and um, mm. only a couple nights of dangerously high winds. I mean, one rainy night is enough for all of us in the mm. middle of the ocean. Tell us what was the most physical or the most difficult part. I know physically it's tough. Mentally, I read at one point you're only supposed to sleep in 90 minute increments and you overslept. Yeah, so um, the physical aspect isn't all that difficult. Um, the mental aspect is definitely the hardest part by leagues. Um, the loneliness and boredom and uh, sleep deprivation are the greatest challenges that I had to deal with. Um, boredom because I uh, misplanned and didn't bring enough books or entertainment. Um, loneliness because I'm alone for 28 days, which um, isn't easy for anyone. And um, sleep deprivation because you can't sleep for very long. Um, and yeah. Cal, you know, being out there on the open ocean at night, it is some of the darkest spots on mm. this planet. Uh, what did you learn about yourself? Um, I'd say what I learned most about myself was just how important people are to me. Mm. I've always considered myself to be somewhat of an introverted extrovert. Um, where I like to be with myself, but at the end of the day, I love people. Um, and that was reaffirmed with this. I just really missed people the whole time. So I don't think I'll do any large solo expeditions anymore. It's just it, more fun to be with people. Just to underscore something that I just, the sleeping piece of it. Because when I was yeah. a teenager, we used to sleep till 10 or 11. You couldn't <laughs> right. drag yourself oh, yeah. out of bed. But I was thinking for 28 days in a row, barely sleeping and having to wake up, how did you physically do that? Um, alarms uh, mm. and um, sleeping during the day was really important, but there were a lot of days that I didn't get more than three hours of sleep. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure yeah. your parents are very excited <laughs> that you're back on dry land mm -hmm. and can't wait to put their arms around you. Congratulations. What a feat. Congrats, it's amazing. Yeah. What were we doing at 16? I, I was going to say driving to I like 7-Eleven. I like worked in Oops. We had a <laughs> super soaker party. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't want to say the statute of limitations hadn't run. So, you know, I'm going to say what I was doing at 16. <laughs> We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. seconds goes by quickly behind the scenes, <laughs> just FYI. This morning, Jill has a double she made it for us. Two amazing entrepreneurs with thriving beauty businesses. Yeah, you're going to love this. These two women had creative and innovative ideas, and let's just say they both nailed it. Mm -hmm. O to L. First, meet Rachel Epfel Glass, founder of Glass Lab. I had been working in finance for nearly a decade when I had my first daughter. By the time I had my second, two years later, the commuting and traveling was a lot. As a working woman and a mom, I felt like manicures were an errand. When I saw a shoe shiner come into my male-dominated offices in the mornings, I'd always think, what if? So to push my idea forward, I went to Nail Tech Training School and researched the salon industry. In 2018, using my own savings, I opened the first Gloss Lab location in New York City. Gloss Lab is a water-free, hygiene-first nail salon experience. It's also membership-based, with members paying a flat rate for monthly unlimited visits with online booking, cashless payment, and quality products. Today, we have 11 locations in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Maryland, and DC, with openings planned in Texas, Florida, and more. And we're even launching into retail products. I'm proud to say our customers are in good hands at Gloss Lab. We love it. Yeah, and Gloss Lab has a few membership options, including a quarterly subscription for $125 a month or a monthly for $135 a month with unlimited visits to the well, that's salons. Big. We also have some of their products and manage your kits right here so that you could do it at home as well. But yes, some people like to get it done. And during the pandemic, mm -hmm. obviously, a lot of people got it done. Anyway. Well, and also, too, it's like life's simple pleasure, right? It's not a billion dollars. It makes you feel good. Like, I think women just, you know, it's like Making cosmetics. your bed, having yes. your nails done. Yes. All right, yes. next up, a woman who changed the game using her background in science to make at-home manicures quicker and more convenient. The result was dazzling. My name is Dr. Vivian Valenti. I've been a chemist for 58 years. I got my bachelor's degree in the Philippines and earned my doctorate at Penn State University in 1971. I'd served as an assistant professor of chemistry, a research scientist, and product developer in large companies when I realized I love solving problems by creating products that may seem mundane to some, but could be life-changing for others. Since I was 18, I have been wearing nail polish, but as I got older, I never found time to go to the salon. I made it then my mission to create a polish that dries in five minutes and lasts for weeks without using skin damaging chemicals and harmful UV rays. After years of trial and error, I created a four-step system with a flexible base coat that expands and contracts with the nail. I called it Dazzle Dry and brought it to market in 2007 with nine colors. Now we have over 170 and will sell a million bottles of product this year. It's amazing to hear that Dazzle Dry is a game changer for women and that's the formula for success. Okay, so I use this in between gel manicures when I can't get to the salon. You literally put it on and it dries in five minutes, no UV light. We have some of the hottest colors here right oh, now. Oh, wow. Good evening from 
from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. It's a can't miss summer on today. They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation? Vicky has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Welcome back to today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody, good, and that's it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? As they say, it's always best to eat in season. And if you're lucky, you've got a farmer's market in your very own neighborhood. But no matter where you shop, today food contributor and host of The Great American Recipe on PBS, Alejandro Ramos, can help us pick the perfect produce. I mean, we were just talking about avocados. I know. Yeah. So I love that Whitney come and set me up for this. Yeah. Because yeah. we are, we are She's your been, opening act. She was my it's opening act. Well, Amazing. It's it can be overwhelming. In the supermarket or the farmer's but, market, you're like, I don't know what to exactly. choose. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the supermarket, it's like, you know where stuff is. The farmer's market can be a little yeah. bit And too I much. love yeah. a farmer's market. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's so fun. And so here's, our, here's some side, uh, some ideas to help you kind of get the most of it. And why? Because it is peak season now, why right? Why like, do you suggest people go to the farmer's market? Well, here's the thing. You're going to get things that are local. You're going to get things that are the freshest things possible, season, right? right? When they get to the supermarket, there's a middleman there. Okay, yeah. Here, you're getting it right awesome. from the farmers. Right. Okay. So we're going to talk about first about how to how to pick out an avocado okay. uh, or a peach or anything like that. So when you want, when you go to the market, you want to get some things that are ripe and some that are less ripe mm -hmm. because you want to space them out so everything doesn't have to get used up right away. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. Right? So you want to pick them up. You want to use your senses. You want sight, smell, uh, touch. Mm -hmm. You want to feel a little bit of softness when you press like right by the root mm -hmm. there. Do you see how that gives? That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a beautiful ripe peach ready to eat. This one, well, actually, this one's ripe too, but then they're a little bit yeah, harder. Hard. Exactly. Same like with avocados. You can eat over a sink. It's so exactly. drippy and with ripe. your greens. I oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's the best. Or this mango. I good. love the juice. Okay. With your greens, you want them to be fresh. You want them to kind of be like sort of taut, standing up, crisp. You don't want them wilted. on the side. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And now keep in mind, you know, throughout the country, seasonality varies. Yeah. So right. there's wherever you are. Find out what's best in your neighborhood, in mm -hmm. your area, so you can so get, you like... just talk... What you're saying is speak to the... Mm -hmm. Go up to the... Exactly. Yeah, you want to talk to the farmers. You want to, like... Exactly. See, so you, you're getting your bananas and your mangoes in uh, in Florida. You've got uh, cherries in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. Obviously, okay. we know the tomatoes are amazing around I, here. How do you choose the right berries? Is there a special way? Well, the berries, you, again, want them to be sort of fresh. You want them mm -hmm. to look like they're, like, mm -hmm. you know, bright and soft. Oh, but so here's berries, the thing yeah. with berries... Wow. You want to be able to taste, right? Yeah. You want to be able to taste things. So you can actually ask them right. if you can, can just I, have a bite or two. Do you ever Don't do that? feel bad about do you ever that. Do that in the supermarket. I, Taste the grape, see if they're without sweet. Without asking. I mean, uh -huh. you want the little yeah, samples. Like, too. don't feel bad about that. Even like green beans, something like that, you can take Friendship. a bite. You're not, there's no pressure to buy. Okay. They really want you to kind of learn and taste it. Melon. I think the toughest melons. thing to pick for me is a melon. Melons How do you know it's right? Feel, so, melons, you want them to smell amazing, but yeah. you also but you want them. tell, can you? You want them to feel heavy for their size. Like, touch this. Doesn't that feel heavy for its size? Yeah. Right? Because that means that's, it's that's right? the juiciness. Those are all the juicy sugars. And then you smell them, those are the sugars ripening in there. Also, use sight. Obviously, like, bananas are an easy example. Simple, unripe, ripe, right? The color changes and deepens, and, and uh, that's how you can tell that something is becoming. Is this you're supposed to knock on it, or is that just a watermelon? No, that's just like a thing. I mean, you see people knocking; they don't know what they're doing. They're just I like they said if it's I know hollow, what I'm doing. It's, there's oh, a no. hollow. It's really about the weight. You okay, really want to feel that heavy. weight. The heavy. Get a heavy one. Okay. okay. Exactly. Um, let's move on to the all right. Veggies. So talking again about asking questions, right? So when you go to the market, you ask the if you see something unfamiliar. So I brought some what? exciting things here. I want to see if you guys know what we have here. What is this? You know what these are? Yeah, we get. A lich, a lichy? These are yeah. rambutans. Yeah. Or rambutans. I actually looked it up. Apparently, rambutan is the British way to say it. Rambutan is the American way. I, we get these Lychees, all the time. We they're very them. similar. Lychees are, inside. Yeah. Be careful. Delicious, yeah. Mm. The lychee is a little yeah. bit more floral than this. This is a little bit sweeter. It's hairy. What about uh -huh. this one? Do you know what this one is? Uh, this is some kind of root. Celery root. Celery root. Yes. This okay. is amazing for pureeing. You can make soups with it. You can saute mm -hmm. it. How about this guy? Is that ginger? Is that no. garlic? Ooh. Sunshoke. What? Sunshoke. What, Sun what is that? Another root vegetable. Really delicious. Roasted, sauteed. Oh. I know you know these. Mm -hmm. Tomatilla. Tomatilla. 
Yeah, oh, isn't that those cool are how fantastic they grow? for roasting and mm-hmm. making salsas, mm-hmm. pozole. Okay. Uh, so some of these veggies here, see so yeah, they look a little bit not like the ones you would see at the grocery store, right? So Cucumber. Chris here in from Today Show grew these in his garden. What? Yes. Yeah, so these Wait, the tomatoes, what? the eggplant, the peppers. Oh my and God. so that's star, what you're gonna see fruit, at the right? mm-hmm. yes. That's what you're going to see at the farmer's market. Things that look a little bit dragon unfamiliar, fruit. but the flavors are amazing. Is that dragon, dragon fruit? fruit? Yeah, yes. we get that. But we get all these different <laughs> You do? Yeah, we like yeah. all this what about stuff. These? You're oh, adventurous. Do you know these? You know these? Uh, leek? Lemongrass. 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 Amazing whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, adding I don't, flavor. I don't. Oh, these are very tart, but oh, they're yeah. fantastic in margaritas and yeah. cocktails. Okay. You need to add rum and sugar. Okay. Okay. Let's sugar. get really, we, gotta, we have to <laughs> speed through. <laughs> okay, so it's not just produce. You can also get dairy and eggs and things like that. But the trick is to get coolers. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> we need the sink so you can drip them. All right, so when you want to get dairy, breads, anything that's going to go bad, keep a cooler in your trunk. Or if uh-huh. you take public yeah. transportation, a All cooler right. bag. That's okay. so smart. You got to rock. Very You're the best. <laughs> to get these tips, head to Hoda or hodaandjenna.com, today.com slash food. Well, hope you come back tomorrow. Jill is going to join us with a new list of steals and deals. I don't want to miss that one. Have a good Tuesday, guys. Today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada has the cure to your midday munchies. She's going to whip up four easy snacks so you'll always be prepared when hunger strikes. First up, Sama making one of Hoda's favorite sweet treats, dates stuffed with almond butter that can be served hot or cold. Then she bakes up a simple super maple almond granola. And finally, she's making popcorn that's spiced with garam masala. Say bye-bye to butter with a spicy snack. I'll just say this, okay? You have a first date with one of these dates. You will be having more. (laughs) I can't with myself. I cannot go a single day without snacking. Whether I'm at home or on the go, it is simply hashtag always snack time. Honestly, a world without snacking is simply not one I want to live in. So I cannot wait to show you three of my favorite weekly snack staples, my delicious stuffed dates, warm and frozen, my nutty maple granola, and my delicious masala popcorn. I love dates, and no, I'm not talking about the romantic kind, I'm talking about the medjool kind. They are my favorite sweet snack to eat throughout the day, and I'm gonna show you how to make them two ways, warmed and stuffed, and frozen and dipped in chocolate. Most dates come with pits, so I've actually already pitted these. I've got about 10 here, so I'm just gonna now take them on a little journey to the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds, just to get them really nice and warm and juicy. first date or a second date when you have 10 dates ready to be stuffed with almond butter. (laughs) Warming the dates brings out their already naturally golden and caramel flavor and then when you stuff them with almond butter the heat actually allows the almond butter to melt so it gets really nice and gooey and delicious. I really already want to eat one right now. (laughs) Okay we're gonna start stuffing them. So I've got a creamy almond butter here. You can also use a crunchy almond butter. You can use a peanut butter, a cashew butter. If there are any nut butters that you're harboring in your pantry, this will be a great time to use them. I'm pretty generous here. I would say I use about a teaspoon to two teaspoons just because I like a lot of almond butter, but you can totally choose however amount works best for your life. Because we've pitted the dates, it actually serves as a really nice pocket for the almond butter to just sit in, a little home, you know? It's like this date was meant for almond butter. You know what I mean? Right? Good form, I think. 
and I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my dates. So actually, Hoda saw this recipe on my Instagram and has now deemed it to be her favorite snack. You take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond butter. Yeah. You know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt. So Hoda, if you're watching this, it's for you. You can kind of see how when I put the almond butter inside this little pocket, it starts to melt a little bit and looks so gooey. Oh, it's like a little river of almond butter that I want to swim in. It's a lucky date. <laughs> oh, I crack only myself up. So for this recipe and a lot of the other recipes I make using dates, you want to make sure you're buying the medjool kind. I'll just say this, okay? You have a first date with one of these dates. You will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> Someone's got to hold me back from making another date joke because it will happen again. Okay. Wait, this guy needs a little more almond butter. I'm so sorry I neglected you for a second. Okay. Okay. I am drowning in almond butter. All of my dates have been stuffed with the almond butter. They look really nice. They look ready to go out on a date. I need to stop. I'm done, I'm done, I promise. Now that I'm done stuffing all of the dates, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of sea salt just to bring out that sweetness and balance everything out really nicely. I sometimes also like to use a salted almond butter too, and that's gonna really create that naturally salty sweet combination, which we love. All right, and there you have it. My favorite warm stuff dates, my coffee companion, my favorite date. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. In my opinion, you can never have enough dates, so I'm going to show you how to make another recipe using dates. They're frozen, stuffed with almond butter, and then dipped in chocolate. So we've got our dates already pitted, and now we're gonna just go ahead and stuff them straight with almond butter. This should feel pretty familiar. Again, we're gonna have the almond butter find a nice little home in this pocket that we've created by pitting the dates. And remember, we are going to be submerging these in chocolate, so we wanna make sure that we don't overfill it with almond butter so that it gets a bit messy, even though we love a bit of messy chocolate. So sometimes when I look at my freezer and I'm like, where did all of the ice cream go? I make these instead. They're also super quick to pull together and use mostly what you have in the pantry. And if you're not keeping dates in your pantry now, take this as your sign to start. If you have a nut allergy, you can even use a tahini or a sunflower seed butter as well. And then when you're done freezing them, they seriously taste like a candy bar. I know you think I'm crazy, but they do, I promise. I eat them for dessert. I eat them as a snack during the day. There's so many things you can do with them. They really are the perfect date. Dates are the perfect date. They are. 
I'm sorry. And now for my chocolate. All I'm gonna do is melt it in the microwave with a little bit of coconut oil. This is gonna help it get nice and smooth and glossy. We're gonna do this in 10 to 15 second increments and we're gonna keep stirring throughout so it gets really nice and smooth. Put that straight in there. Got my spoon at the ready for stirring. And now I'm gonna head to the microwave. Now it is time to take our dates for a little swim in chocolate. I think they're excited about this, I'm not sure. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab a date, just drop it straight into the chocolate. Don't worry, it likes this. Roll it around so that the entire date is coated. Make sure you get that residual chocolate to kind of drip off the size of the spoon like this. And now we're just gonna place it back onto our parchment paper. And now we're going to chocolate swim and repeat. This is like a very luxurious bath, I have to say, for the dates. Because we've stuffed these dates with almond butter, we wanna make sure we're rolling it in the chocolate a little bit gently, just so that the almond butter doesn't come out. It's okay if you get a little messy here. It's part of the game. It's part of the date. No, that wasn't good. Serve this to your next date. That was better, that was good, that was good. Will I ever stop making date jokes after this? No, don't expect me to stop. No, that's not gonna happen. It's part of my brand now. One final date. <laughs> <laughs> now, just for good measure, I'm going to add a little drizzle of chocolate on top. It's going to make it look really pretty. I don't believe in less is more when it comes to chocolate. I think we always need more chocolate. If you don't like chocolate, I want to understand you. Please drop me a line. But also, if you don't like chocolate, that's fine. Like, it's totally okay. But I still want to understand you. <laughs> Okay. Now I'm just gonna top them with a little flaky sea salt. This is really gonna bring out that sweetness, balance out the chocolate. It is the perfect combination. I'm using a flaky sea salt as well, so it looks really pretty and a little fancy. Okay, we're salted. And now we're ready for the freezer. Can we take a moment? Look at how cute they look. These dates are ready for their date. Gotta stop making date jokes. Okay. These are honestly so good because of the chocolate, because of the almond butter and that little flaky sea salt. They seriously taste like a candy bar. America's favorite candy bar. You know what I'm talking about. Plating my hot dates with my frozen dates. We're going on a lot of dates today. They honestly look so good. I love them. You know what? I need to take a picture of these to send to Hoda. I know this is her favorite snack. She's gonna love the chocolate ones too. These dates are fully ready for their close-up. It's almost unfair. All right, got the shot. I think it's time for me to taste. that. Mmm. It is so good. The dates are so sweet. The almond butter works so well. That salt, it's making everything come to life. I knew there's a reason why I eat these every day. Now that my dates are done, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Let's keep this between us. Granola is super easy to make at home. I'm gonna get the ingredients so I can show you how.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Uvalde, Texas, a small town that has become yet another landmark. How long do you think it took for all this damage to occur? Can you tell us what, what it was like? With our NBC News exclusive. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. It's a can't-miss summer on today. Ah! They are walking strong, elegant, and pretty easy to prepare. How to cut costs on your vacation. Vicki has the answers. Every single thing you need for the best summer yet. Only on today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Granola is one of my favorite things to make at home. It's super versatile, so you can eat it solo, just munch on it as you're going about your day, or serve it with your favorite yogurt or milk. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite nutty maple granola. For any granola recipe, I like to separate my wet and dry ingredients. We wanna make sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated, so that's why I'm gonna do this. I've got some melted and cooled coconut oil here, and I'm just gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I'm using some of my almond butter. And this is going to serve as a really nice mixture for the oats and nuts and seeds and whatever else we're adding to this granola to really cling on to so we can get those really crunchy clusters. And clusters are why we're all eating granola in the first place anyway, right? Almond butter is in. To sweeten it up, we're going to add some maple syrup. This is the maple portion of my nutty maple granola. Maple adds this really nice golden richness to the granola. It's so good. It's really lightly sweet, so it's not too sweet. I've got all my wet ingredients in my bowl, and now I'm just gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Be careful here. Wear an apron. I don't do it, but you should. <laughs> we're whisking, and we're whisking. And I just want to whisk this until it's nice and smooth, making sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated. Okay, wet ingredients, we're going to set them aside. They're going to hang out for later. And now I'm going to get to work on my dry ingredients. Because I like to maximize the presence of clusters in my granola, it's very important to me, I'm going to crush my nuts before I add them into my oats. So in order to do this, all you have to do Add your nuts into any sort of bag. Take a rolling pin or even a bottle and just get your stress out like this. You can also roll them if you're more delicate, but I'm really going for it today. I promise I'm a very patient person in general. We want them to be coarsely crushed, but it's okay if we have some bigger or smaller pieces because it's nice to have some texture with our granola. We like the crunch. Okay, I've got my bowl of oats right here. And now I'm just gonna add all of my dry mix-ins in. Adding my pecans in here. My stress pecans, the result of my stress pecans. 
I should also say that if you've got any nuts or seeds that have just been hanging out in your pantry for a little too long, this is a great opportunity to use them up. I'm adding some almonds in now. Just gonna use some cinnamon here. You can also use some nutmeg if you'd like, really whatever you'd like. And then, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now I'm just gonna fold in all my dry ingredients together. Make sure everyone gets to know each other. It's very friendly granola. Now that I've mixed all my dry ingredients together, I'm just gonna add in my wet ingredients and mix everything together. Okay, here we go. It's very aesthetically pleasing. This wet mixture is really what's gonna help this granola have clusters, so I like to make sure when I am mixing both the wet and dry ingredients together that everything is really nicely coated. Okay, listen closely. The really important thing when you're making granola is to make sure that everyone has some personal space. So we wanna make sure that all of the oats and nuts in this entire mixture is spread out in a very even layer so everyone has room to breathe. By spreading everything out, we're also going to make sure it bakes in a very even and crisp layer. And we're just patting everything down really gently, spreading it out nicely. We don't want to pat anything too hard to crush any of the nuts. Now that everything is spread out, I'm just going to go bake in the oven at 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. While our granola is baking, we want to make sure that we're stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes so we can ensure an even and crisp bake. Spread it out evenly again. And then back in the oven we go. The secret to super crispy, crunchy, clustery granola is actually letting it cool completely before you break it apart and serve it. I know it's tempting, but just don't touch it for a little bit, okay? This granola is completely cool, so now I'm just gonna break it apart and add it to my plate. I mean, you just can't. You can't say no to this. This is crazy. Look at how crunchy. The clusters are what I live for. It's the only reason I eat granola. Like, this is the most satisfying thing to me, ever. I will break it apart, though. Just a little bit. We want to maintain those clusters though. I'll take granola over a granola bar any day. That's just me. And did you see how easy it was to throw this together? You literally just combine both your wet and dry ingredients and you've got this super delicious, one can amazing granola. And look at this bake. It's so even, so golden and crispy. Hey, it's time for me to taste waiting to dig into this cluster this entire time. Lightly sweet from the maple syrup, not too sweet, so it's a perfect breakfast companion. Or honestly, you could eat this at any time of the day. You could even top ice cream with this. It's a really nice, crisp, golden layer on top of some vanilla ice cream. Ooh, sign me up. You know what, my dad loves this recipe. I make it for him all the time. Let me send him a picture so he can be a little bit jealous of me in it. <laughs> so he can remember my face. <laughs> he knows what I look like. <laughs> He's gonna be so jealous. Mm. So good. Speaking of my dad, this next recipe is inspired by him, something he used to make all the time. So I'm gonna go grab the ingredients and start popping some popcorn. Wow, 
welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a variation of a popcorn recipe that my dad used to make all the time. Poor guy. My mom, my sister, and I would always steal some before he could even have a single kernel. So I guess this is redemption for him. I'm going to show you how to make your popcorn really delicious, really flavorful with this spice-infused olive oil mixture. So I've already popped my popcorn, and now I'm just heating my pan on medium-low heat and add a little bit of olive oil. You can use your favorite spices here, but I'm going to use one of my favorites, which is some garam masala. This is a really common blend of Indian spices, and it's really delicious, really warming, creates a very savory flavor in this popcorn. I'm going to add this straight to my oil, along with some cayenne pepper. This is going to take it up a notch in the spice department because I like things very spicy. Finally, I'm going to add a little pinch of salt. And now all we're going to do is just stir our spices. Now the reason that we're heating the spices here in the oil is because nobody likes a raw spice. Raw spices are not cute to eat. So we want to cook the spices with the oil so they become fragrant, they become aromatic, and it just infuses a lot of flavor into your popcorn. I was so obsessed with popcorn in college, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I made it through. I would just snack on it like all the time. It got me through my exams. Thank you, popcorn. It's done so much for me in my life. And you want to make sure you continue to stir your spices in with the oil so it doesn't burn. We're only doing this for about a minute or so until you smell that delicious aromatic spice smell. You don't want it to smell too raw. When you allow the garam masala to cook in this oil, you can really smell all of those individual spices, the cumin, the cloves, the coriander. It smells so fragrant. So my spices and my oil smells really aromatic. I've cooked it for about a minute. Now it's time to just drizzle it over my popcorn. There we go. I'm just gonna shake it up so everything is fully incorporated in here. Now I'm gonna drizzle it over my popcorn. It smells so good. Now I'm just going to toss it so that everything is well incorporated. This is just a really great way to make a flavor infused popcorn so that you're not just going with the plain salt, you're not just going with the plain butter, there's a little something extra going on. Now that my spices are fully incorporated in my popcorn, I'm going to add a little bit of nutritional yeast. This adds a very cheesy and savory flavor to the popcorn without actually adding any cheese. Perfect. Mix 
that in a little bit. And then I'm gonna finish with a little pinch of salt. I have to show my dad that I made this. It's a little bit better than his. <laughs> I'm so mean. <laughs> it smells so good. I seriously wish you could smell it. I cannot wait to dig in. So I'm just not gonna wait. I'm going to dig in. Oh, come on. Okay, this might be dramatic, but I don't think I can eat regular popcorn ever again. Mmm, it's so good. And again, you can use your favorite spices here. You can even do a little salt and pepper, a little garlic powder. Really make it your own, but just know that I have a feeling you will not go back to regular salted popcorn. Butter? Who is she? Mmm! It's so good. It's really good. You guys should try this. The next time you get a snack attack, all I have to say is just don't panic. Remain calm. Make these three recipes. They're so delicious and the best way to keep your days going. guys, super busy, cooking up a storm, but I have something exciting to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back, so tune into today all day. Okay, I got some in the oven, I gotta go. See you later.